Western Kentucky controls their own fate in Conference USA, looking for their first title in five years. Bailey Zappi at quarterback. Jarris Stearns at wide receiver. Probably the best duo in the country, and the numbers back it up. But Middle Tennessee is here today for the upset. A rivalry game between MTSU and Western Kentucky. They call it 100 miles of hate. Oh, they hate Big Red down there in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. We've got a rivalry matchup between two schools who've been playing each other for over 100 years. Western Kentucky in a three-way tie for first to begin the day in Conference USA's East Division. Middle Tennessee just a game back. With the two-time Super Bowl champion Max Starks, I'm Chris Hassel. Max, both these teams bringing momentum into November, playing their best football when it matters most. Yeah, absolutely. You look at what Middle Tennessee is able to do, how they clawed their way back to get to 500 was defense. And then, of course, on the other side, you look at Western Kentucky. It's all offense. It's high octane. It's high flying. All of those things that you want to see in a college football game. Let's take a closer look at that. And Bailey Zappi in particular, the only quarterback in the country averaging over 400 passing yards a game. Bailey Zappi is leading the country, and why? Because he's leading it with wide receivers on the field. He has four and five, and this one he has what we call 10 personnel, four wide, run running back, and just eviscerates guys. He's cooking it over the top. And when you get too concentrated on guys on the outside, that's when the slot guys get you right there. Seam route perfectly executed for the easy TD. And then, of course, if you're going to lead the country in passing and passing touchdowns, you usually have a receiver that complements that. Well, that guy's Jeff Stearns. He's five foot nine, but don't let it fool you. He plays like he's six foot nine. The kid can absolutely burn a defense, man, zone. He has a knack for getting in the end zone and also getting receptions. And look at the numbers that these two guys lead the country in. Bailey Zappi in passing yards a game and passing touchdowns. Jared Stearns in uh, receiving yards a game and 11 receiving touchdowns. Eight receivers with two touchdowns or more for Western Kentucky. Now for Middle Tennessee, Chase Cunningham was playing so well at quarterback. He was injured last week. He's out for the season. They're going to go with the freshman, Nick Vadiato, to start this ball game. We'll have more on him in just a moment. But for Middle Tennessee, it's all about the defense. They forced a nation high 25 turnovers this season. You're absolutely right. The defense is led by, of course, Jordan Ferguson, the ju junior off the edge. We'll watch here. He creates havoc. He's removed in the slot, so you don't put him in the count, but that's a huge human being. I would want to count him, right? And he's got seven and a half sacks on the season. He terrorizes the backfield. Well, when you terrorize the backfield, What's the deal? You want to get it out of the backfield so you start to pass fast. DQ Thomas, one of the guys when you're talking about leading the nation in turnovers is things like this, the pick sixes in the game. And of course, short tackling coming up, Reed Blankingship coming with the scoop and score and going yard. All those things are necessary, and that's why Middle Tennessee was able to claw themselves out of that one and three start that they had and get back to in this race for the East. They won three of four. As you take a look at their numbers, four defensive touchdowns. They had three non-offensive touchdowns in last week's win. Eight different players with at least one interception this season. It's a great rivalry that dates back a long time. The Tops and the Blue Raiders, for the last 10, have even gone to overtime. Kickoff is next. Almost time for kickoff here on a 60 degree sun splash day in Bowling Green, Kentucky, Hodgins Smith Stadium. And we want you to get in the action all throughout the game. We're gonna be showing you these QR codes. Scan this one right now and show us your true team colors. Represent your school. Scan that QR code. You'll be directed to the Flow Code website to vote for your fan base. Western Kentucky fans, Middle Tennessee fans, you're a part of the game today. With Max Starks, I'm Chris Hassel. Western Kentucky won the toss. They've deferred to the second half. Middle Tennessee will get the ball first. Tyson Helton in his third season at Western Kentucky. Done such a great job this season getting all those transfers from Houston Baptist. Rick Stockstill, 16th season with Middle Tennessee, the ninth most wins at one school among active coaches. And we're underway, and this one's going to go through the end zone for a touchback. So Middle Tennessee is going to start 
at the 25-yard line. And here's the quarterback situation. Chase Cunningham got hurt last game. He's out for the season. Mike DeLello, the backup, has seen a lot of action in a wildcat situation this season as a runner. So they're going with Nick Fatiato, the freshman from Plantation, Florida, saw his first appearance last week late in the game. The win last week against Southern Miss. He's only thrown two passes in his career. It's going to get interesting early, <laughs> just to say the least, Chris. Yeah, and if you're Middle Tennessee, you got to think you're going to have to put up a lot of points. Western has scored 31-plus in every game this season. It's a good start for the Blue Raiders. That's Jimmy Marshall on the reception, a pickup of close to nine yards on first down. And Jimmy Marshall does a great job coming off the inside edge at the wingback position and just sitting down right on a little hook route so that Badiato can see him. And he'll turn and hand off to one of his two running backs. That's another position, Max, where they are decimated. They're without Brad Anderson, Amir Rasul, and Shatan Mobley. So the only running backs they have right now are Martel Petaway and Frank Pison. Last week, Mike DeLello, their quarterback, was actually their third running back in that game as well. He's an emergency running back if they need him. And I think that's how you kind of pass the bodies together and just create a wall. It's a dive play right up the middle. You got a little misdirection coming off the edge, trying to see if they can pull a guy out of the box, but they don't. But no problem. They, they just mash forward what offensive line do best. And that's what the running back, Frank Peasant, can do. He's a converted linebacker, real physical downhill runner. It picks up two yards on third and one. Dariato to throw, and that's nicely done across the field, and a good pickup on first down. Boy, if you can stay ahead of the chains, things become a lot easier for the freshman. And I think this is what we're seeing early. You know, you usually script your top 15. The top 15's working outside of that one run, but you're getting a rhythm. You're trying to get Dariato comfortable with passing the ball and seeing it, giving him quick, easy reads, um, and guys are making themselves open. Really high on Dariato, but... He was the four-string quarterback to start this season as that one goes through the hands of Frank Pizant, the running back. They started the year with Bailey Hockman, who left the program early. Then Chase Cunningham, injured for the season. Mike DeLello is just really a running quarterback. Needs somebody to throw the ball, so they go with Nick Vadiato. And we should see some of DeLello today. I mean, we've seen him all throughout the season mostly in running situations. Another third down here, third and three. Fake the handoff, throw it in the flat, and the tight end, Jimmy Marshall's gonna pick up that first down. Nice, tough sledding. Look at that play. Jimmy Marshall is sitting at the left tight end position, and he just kind of runs a drag out and lets the right receivers kind of run. Almost, It's almost like a tight end screen, but it's too fast to be a tight end screen. But they allow the lead blockers. Jimmy Marshall was a guy who came to middle as a wide receiver. They talked to him. He agreed to move over to tight end, and he's been flourishing. He's getting a lot more receptions than he did at the wide receiver position. Came in leading the team in receptions. Has 33 now on the season. It's a handoff right up the middle once again. It's Peasant. Picks up close to four yards on first down. Opening drive of the game for Middle Tennessee against Western Kentucky. Peasant will come out. Not going to see any two running back sets from Middle Tennessee. That's what Brent Deerman, the offensive coordinator, told us because they only have two healthy running backs. Yeah, it's hard to put all your options out on the field at one time. You got to keep something there to leave for the imagination. And good protection. He'll go down the seam. DJ England Chisholm, touchdown! What a start for Nick Fatiano. Tremendous play design. Great protection by the offensive line. And of course, DJ England Chisholm comes up. He's running a deep post route. The, the DB is all on top of him, and he separates at the last second right before the reception. He gets a step or two, and then he converts that into a touchdown. This is what Middle Tennessee is going to have to do because we know what Western Kentucky is capable of. You've got to put ball, you've got to put points on the board, and you also have to control the ball in time of possession. So great job, first start for Middle. And Zeke Rankin hits the extra point. In Middle Tennessee goes eight plays, 75 yards, three minutes and 11 seconds, a couple of third down conversions, and a big hit for the touchdown. Seven nothing, Blue Raiders.
What a start to this one for Middle Tennessee on the road. 45-yard touchdown on the opening drive of the game. They're up 7-0 here on Stadium. The best way to watch Stadium is to download the app. Just use that QR code on your screen, just like you do at the restaurants with the menu these days. Stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. You can watch live and classic games, daily studio shows, and original programming. Stadium, welcome to the game. And welcome to Bowling Green, Rick Stockstill. Great start to this one and by his inexperienced freshman quarterback. And Western Kentucky. Got to run this one back, and it's a good run back across the 30-yard line. That's Jakari Moses. A good starting field position for the number one quarterback in the country, Bailey Zappi. We were talking with Tyson Helton about Bailey, and he said, look, I recruited Bryce Young when I was at USC. He's going to be awesome, but Bailey is the most complete quarterback in the country. And you look at last year, led the country with all passers a year ago, and now he's doing the same thing again at a higher level of competition here at Western Kentucky. And we're starting out already five wides. I said this in the open. He leads the country in keeping wide receivers on the field to throw to. And Zappi hit as he throws. That ball wobbly and incomplete. Zappi took a big hit as he tried to hook up with Josh Stearns, the younger brother of Jared Stearns, and that's DQ Thomas on the coverage. DQ Thomas coming in on a blitz. They had a little what we like to call a TT stunt up the middle that frees it up for DQ Thomas to have what we call a fire dog, and he definitely made it count. That's one of the things. If you're going to be this defense and try and take out a high-flying quarterback, you must hit him and hit him often when available. Yeah, by DQ Thomas on the coverage, I meant the coverage of Bailey Zappi, as in he covered his entire body on the turf. Second down and 10. If they can get to him that fast, they'll have some success, relatively speaking. But that one is complete. A nice catch for the first down. That's Malachi Corley. Yeah, freshman. There's a lot of freshmen scattered throughout this team, not only at the wide receiver position, but along the offensive line as well. Look how quick they get to the line and snap it and go right back, back shoulder to Corley, incomplete. And th this is something, you know, I, I had to ask, hey, How's the conditioning of these guys? All these guys are above 300 pounds on the offensive line. We said they won't tire. <laughs> that was what was quote. And as you see here, they're on the ball. They're quick. They got to know their assignments. And when you play spread, it makes it a lot easier for you to define who your five guys that you need to block on a play by play basis. And they really don't sub out. We see a lot of teams these days rotating in seven, eight, nine offensive linemen. It's pretty much the five starters in. That's it. Out in the flat, that's Jarrah Stearns, the nation's leading receiver down the sideline, close to the 30-yard line. What a great execution. Now, you know this is a passing team, but you still got to honor the ball fake, so they fake it here, running a jet motion with, with a swing route to Jarrah Stearns. And the kid's fast. He's, he's super fast, and he just coasts to the sideline. He says, ah, I don't want to go any further. I'll just step out of bounds. 28-yard play leading the FBS in all of those categories. They give him the 29-yard line, first and 10, Western Kentucky on their opening drive of the game, looking to match the Middle Tennessee touchdown. And they'll keep it on the ground. Big hole up the middle and a touchdown saving tackle by Reed Blankenship. Noah Whittington, who scored his first touchdown of the season last week, is explosive and a spark plug for this offense. We talked about Malachi Corey being a freshman. This is another freshman, number 20, Noah Whittington. And they get, oh, the umpire got in the way of what would have been a touchdown. And the Blue Birds are out, Joey Belgian was running free. Zappi was going to have his 34th touchdown pass of the season, but the umpire got in the way. Boom! Man, talk about it. it he should throw a flag on himself <laughs> for pass interference right there. That should be a spot foul at that point, you know. That's one of the things about being an umpire. You know, you, you worry about them being too close to the line of scrimmage. Well, then you back up, and then you're missing a, a, just a slam dunk of a pass. That's Joe Nannis, the umpire. They'll go to the end zone on this play, and they'll get the touchdown anyway. Little trash talk. Daywood Davis on the reception, and the Hilltoppers boom, boom, boom with the response. And that's what I think this game is going to be. It's going to be fireworks on both sides. The question is, can Middle keep the pace? 
that that the pressure that's applied by Western Kentucky Bailey Zappi there just distributed the ball to all his receivers everybody got a shot at it Bell Jam would have had that touchdown <laughs> but it's okay it made, it made room for someone else to get a touchdown on that drive but fast and very quick and sevens on the board Braden Narvison oh, almost hit the camera lens two possessions two touchdowns in the first five minutes of this game and what a great job, great protection up front. And then just coming back, he works his way back to the ball. He gets the defender on his heels and then turns around and, and gives Bailey Zappi his numbers. And Bailey Zappi puts it right on him. What a what a great job. Yes, you could talk about a little bit of push up, but it's football. You know, I, I think that's, a, oh, okay. I didn't see that part of it. Did you see a little extra helmet to helmet well, there was a little talking. trash talk there I'm glad they didn't throw anything I'm, yeah. I'm tired of the of the flags these days for celebrations and taunting can't be sensitive if you get beat own it own it do something about it next time around when you're out there don't let don't let them beat you seven plays 68 yards it took just a minute 22 seconds for Tyson Hilton and Western Kentucky their average time of possession on scoring drives 232 this is not a team that's going to kill you with 12 play drives no no they want to do it in the least amount of time as possible and of course I mean the transfer portal we talk about it, and we'll get more into it has been such a success for Western Kentucky because Daywood Davis who caught that one guess where he came from mm -hmm. came from Oregon <laughs> you know you got the Houston Baptist uh, revival I'll call it out there <laughs> in Western Kentucky bringing over Zappy Stearns brothers and and uh, rats rats laugh I always I always get that <laughs> uh, rats laugh bringing those four over but they went and they just brought guys in to really fit this offense and give them something and right now it's paying dividends uh, for the Hilltoppers and Middle Tennessee boy they were feeling great after that opening drive touchdown it's just going to have to keep doing it. Might this be like the game earlier this season here on this field between Western Kentucky and UTSA? Roadrunners winning that 52 46, stopping Western Kentucky on a goal to go situation to win the game. Nick Fatiato completes it again. This one good for three yards. He's five for six to start this game. What have you seen from the young freshman here in his first start? Well, I can tell you this. The best security blanket for a young quarterback is a good tight end. And Jimmy Marshall is doing that. A lot of short routes, get the ball out. Doesn't have to go through a progression in his reads. It's usually the first or the second option, and he's getting the ball out, not allowing Western Kentucky to pressure him in the pocket. Already three catches for Jimmy Marshall. That one caught by Jalen Lane. He doesn't get much. We give him the 30 yard line. It'll be third down and five. Middle had a couple of third down conversions on third and short on their opening drive. Well, and, and you see here a lot of screens, a lot of quick passes by Vadiato. You're not seeing the deep routes except for on the touchdown, getting the defense to suck up on them. Maybe they try another shot here, but most important, get everyone to the sticks. That's an eligible receiver. Fans making some noise here at the Houch. Three game winning streak for Western Kentucky tied atop the division to begin the day with their fate in their own hands. And they feel great about their chances. Battiato incomplete. Intended for C.J. Windham. But good coverage on the play by Kendrick Simpkins, the safety. They're without A.J. Brathwaite today at safety. Injured last game out this week. So a little shorthanded to that position. Yeah, usually they have the one-two punch, but that's okay. 16 is more than is more than two in this moment. And you see the pressure right at the last second, a low hit um, to Vadiato, but young young ligaments uh, can rebound from that. <laughs> Older ligaments, not so much. You know, like those kids made of spaghetti. No ACLs in the kids these days. <laughs> yeah. Spiraling punt, pretty good one. Taken in at the 22, and then an immediate tackle on the play by DJ England Chisholm. How about that? Catches the touchdown pass on the opening drive, makes a big special teams tackle to end the second drive. 7 7 to start this football game. Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky early going first quarter. Bailey Zappi and that offense back out of the field for Western Kentucky. They'll start at the 21 yard line. And don't blink between plays. I haven't seen a team snap it faster between plays this season than Western Kentucky does. They move at a high level. I mean, we showed the graphic before the last break, two minutes and 32 seconds on average. That previous drive, less than two minutes, so they're keeping themselves on pace.
And they throw it to the motion man, Jareth Stearns. Breaks the tackle in the backfield, picks up positive yardage. Could have been a TFL, but able to squeak out of that for a pickup of five and a half yards on first down. And there you see that quick snap once again. Nice movement in the pocket, and a little bit too much for Malachi Corley. Where they've gone that way 90% of the snaps already today. They must like the matchups out there on that side. Yeah, look, looking to try and, I guess, take advantage of one of those young safeties. I mean, it's it, Trey Fluellen is, uh, is the guy <laughs> that, that they've targeted a couple times on that edge being matched up against Corley. Fluellen just a sophomore. Third down and five. Middle Tennessee has gotten some pressure on Bailey Zappi a couple of times already in this game. And this one is incomplete through the hands of Mitchell Tinsley and no penalty marker. So Middle Tennessee gets a rare stop and the punt unit is out. This Middle Tennessee special teams has been great this season. Four blocked kicks, blocked a couple of field goals, blocked a couple of punts, and last week blocked a Southern Miss punt, returned it for a touchdown. So we call that a kick six where you block the kick and you return it in for a touchdown. So Middle Tennessee knows how to turn the ball over and score in all three phases uh, as a football team. 25 takeaways entering today, leading the nation. John Haggerty having some trouble with that. And then a little sidewinder that's going to end up working out well for Western. Finally scooped up inside the 20-yard line by Jalen Lane. But they'll mark it at the 18-yard line. Lane trying to save some field position. It was a really hard punt to try to recover and return. Middle has it back in a 7-7 game here in the first. East team has already had a couple of possessions, and we're not even halfway through the first quarter. 8-18 to go here in the first 7-7. Join us next Saturday on Stadium 3 Eastern Time for College Kickoff Live. Cam Smith, Michael Felder, and Will Blackman kicking off our college football coverage every Saturday on Stadium. Welcome to the game. And we got uh, Mike DeLello into the game for the first time for Middle Tennessee. It was Nick Vadiato the first couple series. DeLello more of a running quarterback getting his first action here. And he'll hand it off. On first down, and not much not in delivered the blow. Oh, Palasi first into what Paul eight Brad freshman. Happy will swing it. Lara Stearns makes the first mighty mouse. I mean, I feel like that's what I need to call him. Uh, Jared Stearns only sitting at five nine, but the kid has skills. Makes the makes the short catch on the outside, but then makes a man miss, and then he accelerates uh, and almost gets it to the end zone. But luckily, they get stopped short. One more play that they must make, and it's first and goal from the five. And a little jet sweep, Malachi Corley is in. Touchdown, Tops. Two plays. 20 yards, touchdown, Western Kentucky. If you're Middle Tennessee, this is the worst thing that could happen to you. A team that already is quick at scoring, giving the field. 18-7, touchdown for the Hilltop. Want to get out of the See, I'm still trying to establish the run. I have, a, I have a freshman quarterback in there seeing his first significant time. He just had a turnover. You don't want them in, you don't want the quarterback inside of his head. You've got to kind of create that two-dimensional balance but the problem is, if you continue to have plays like that where you give them the short field or you're not taking time off the clock, your defense is not rested. It's going to be a tough way to defense. So let's see what they come out with this time around. DeLello came in for a Wildcat play. Let's see if they keep it more in rhythm and traditional and get um, Badiato back into the rhythm of things. Jalen Lane, the return man, is going to let it go over his head. Now, Vadiato with a really rough start to that last drive, took the huge hit on second down and then the interception on third down. 
Yeah, the the interception, as we as we see, we have we have Gaithings who's going to be right here running the route. And the problem is, is that you just took a big hit the last play, right? You're trying to figure out where your guy is, so you try and sit in top inside of it, but the corner plays off coverage. The will back or the nickel back comes in underneath, and so you force a tight window to Vadiato that he has to throw it in, and he ends and he ends up putting it a little bit too high for his receiver to go get it. And that pass complete to C.J. Windham. It really was probably as good a pass as you could put on that when you're trying to get into that bracket coverage, but just not a good decision to make that pass. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. It wasn't a good decision, and that's what we talked about. He's young, so he's getting to his first and only, and maybe second read in his progression before he's letting the ball go, and maybe had he had a little bit more time to scan back to the other side and pull that nickel off of him, it would have given Chisholm a better target area. Shadows creeping to the middle of the field now. As Vadiato goes play action, and now throws it down the sideline, incomplete. It was intended for Yusuf Ali, and it's third down. Yeah, get, getting Vadiato off the point, little waggle pass there, we call it, with the play action to the running back, a quarter rollout back to the right-hand side. And he has three layers of options to throw to. You have, a, you have a shallow drag, you have a deeper middle drag, and then you have a guy that's playing over the top. Pick the middle guy just a little bit too hot and outside for, for the receiver to pull, haul in. Last third down resulted in an interception. And they set up the tunnel screen, and Western was all over it. Jaden Hunter made the stop, pulling by the jersey. And Jared Pierce had nowhere to go, Max. And that's one of the tough things when you run that tunnel screen. If you don't get all of your guys out of there, great job by the guard in the center to get out there. But the problem is the tunnel got formed by, by a bunch of red shirts instead of the white shirts to funnel it back inside and up the seam. And Western Kentucky was ready for it, and they collapsed on top of Jared Pierce immediately. Kyle Ulrich to punt it away to Jared Stearns. We have a couple of men back to the Hilltoppers. Stearns, one of them. They kick it to Stearns, who waves for the fair catch at the 32-yard line. More good starting field position, though, for Western Kentucky. Yeah, and you had D'Angelo Wilson back there kind of running as a personal protector for the returner. You're, normally, it's just for the punter, but you could do it on part return team, and he's there because of the previous punt two Stearns where they got right up on top of him and made the play immediately trying to give him a little bit of space because we see what he can do when he's when he has space Jared Stearns is absolutely electric Zappi already two touchdown passes in this first quarter came in leading the nation with 33 he's now up to 35 and on first to 10 it's a handoff no Whittington taken down in the backfield nice play by Jordan Ferguson Jordan Ferguson, the enforcer and the big body on this defense that makes a lot of things go on the line of scrimmage, just absolutely chases down Whittington uh, for the tackle for loss. Ferguson, third in the country in TFLs coming into this game. That was his 15th now of the season, the redshirt junior from Atlanta. Loss of two on first down. Zappi's going to set up and go long again. Double coverage. Almost picked off. Off the fingertips of Diedrich Stanley. And the number one rule, if you're going to show cover zero or cover one, we have this rule. We call it single high, let it fly. Because that means you're getting man coverage, and they had they had four wide receivers, so you have to take that shot. And Dietrich Stanley run, runs the route just as well, but luckily at the last second gets it tipped away for the missed interception. And Greg Great, the safety, was able to come over there and help out as well. Third down and 12. This Middle Tennessee defense has played pretty well so far. They've pressured Bailey Zappi a couple times. They forced a punt. Two drives ago, Zappi looking to pick up the first down, and that one short hops to Jarris Stearns. Good coverage once again, and it'll be the second punt of the first quarter. The number's a little bit deceiving, but this Middle Tennessee defense was faced with a short field when Western Kentucky 
had that interception return inside the 20 yard line. So really they've only given up one real touchdown drive here in this game. No, they have, and on that last one, you saw Stanley underneath and Reed Blankenship running the bracket over the top of Stearns, who was sitting inside the slot at the top of the screen, and just a great job. They know who the playmaker is, and they want to make sure they keep him contained as much as possible. Ooh, that one was almost blocked by Yusuf Ali. Fair catch call for at the 27 by Jalen Lane. Now Middle Tennessee got off to a great start with that touchdown drive of 75 yards, but since then, Western Kentucky's defense has been great. Yeah, Western Kentucky's defense is playing solidly. A lot of PBUs and a lot of pressure. The hit there by Ingnott, that was a huge one, which led to the next play being an interception by Vadiato. This one right here, I just talked about. And Halasi just makes a great play off the edge. And Western Kentucky's doing a great job of really combating and kind of confusing what Vadiato can do. And he's not taking a lot of time to read through his progressions. And this is not a, a great running team at Middle Tennessee. Only average 104 rushing yards a game. Making it even tougher on the freshman quarterback at his first start, but does a nice job finding his running back there for a first down as a penalty marker flies from way back in the secondary. That was Martel Petaway on the reception. Back judge with uh, showing off the arm. On that flag. Yeah, it looks like a right fielder looking to gun somebody down at home plate. See as they have that discussion there. Referee is Joe Laring. Pass interference. Offense. Number two. Oh, Isaiah Gay things caught with blocking ahead of time. Another look at it. Ah, uh, yeah, runs a pick there right before Petaway gets it. So it's more so that pick route. You can't run the pick. You have to continue to sell it. Chris, you got to sell it. Oh, I'm running my route, and this guy's in my way. Oh, I ran into him by accident. Oh, shucks. Rough start for Gathings. Had that drop that went off his fingertips, ended up in an interception. And now the penalty has him way back as DJ England Chisholm gets taken down. That's Beanie Bishop been doing it a long time here in Bowling Green. And I mean, it was it was a great job, a great idea by the jet sweep. You get bodies on bodies, and Petaway pushes him out trying to create the lane, but Chisholm stays to the outside of him and goes right into the defender that Petaway is blocking. Still just a redshirt sophomore, but this is his fourth season playing. I'm not going to get into that math. <laughs> Batiato to throw, sideline complete. There's Gethings hanging on to that one, and they needed that to set up a third down and somewhat manageable, but they're still behind the chains, third and 12. Yeah, we call this third third and realistic. Because <laughs> it would have been third and possible earlier uh, for Batiato. A lot of, still a lot of screens, a lot of short routes. We haven't seen him really test his deep, his deep throw knowledge outside of that one route he threw to the touchdown for, for uh, Chisholm. They give him the 26 yard line, so it's third and 11 officially. Middle Tennessee had those two third down conversions on their opening drive, 0 for 3 since. Time to throw for Vadiano, and he throws another pick. Beanie Bishop has it. He's inside the 20. Bishop still on his feet. Pick six. Miscommunication there. And boy, oh boy, did it did it did it hurt Middle Tennessee in that situation? Vadiato looked like he was trying to throw, you know, the corner route, and and the receiver cuts on an in route and just sits there. And you know, hey, Beanie Bishop, opportunity is one of those things that you say it, it's preparation that gets you in that position. But you have to wonder the, 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 the thought process. That was Jalen Lane they were trying to throw to, and he does not make the right cut, or Vadiato makes the wrong decision on the throw. A freshman mistake by Vadiato getting his first start because Chase Cunningham is out for the season, his second pick of the first quarter. All right, let's take another look. 
Jalen Lane is the guy that's running right here, and he's the one that looks like he's supposed to break off the route and come to the corner, but he cuts in and comes on a comeback route, and Vadiato throws it right as he's making the decision, what we would call probably a choice route, right? You run the corner, you run the in, or you run the comeback. And Vadiato thought he saw the coverage for him to throw that out, throw the back shoulder fade, and it did not work out for him. And Beanie Bishop sitting there in zone coverage is in the right place at the right time and then returns it back to the house for a score for Western Kentucky. First career interception as well for Beanie Bishop. We spent uh, all that time talking about this Western Kentucky offense, but it's the defense that has done it so far. Pick six here, had an interception earlier in the quarter. Set up a short field in the red zone. And they cash that one in as well. And it's a 14-point lead as Western has reeled off 21 straight. And we still have two minutes plus in this quarter, Chris. <laughs> We're still in the first quarter. And this one goes into the end zone. We were talking with Maurice Crum, the defensive coordinator, and he had a lot of great things to say about Beanie Bishop in particular. Small but fiery at 5'10", 175. Yeah, and it, red shirt sophomore. I mean, like you said, only, only, uh, only what, two years, quote unquote, played, but he's played here the last four years. I'm not going to begin to explain how that how that red shirting process works. You can play four games and then you can take them off. And but just know that he still has a lot of football left in him if he so chooses. Yeah, I could play two more years after this. They'll keep it on the ground on first down, looking to get some semblance of a running game. A pickup of about four yards on first down for Frank Pizan. Pizan just lowers the shoulders and tries to go forward. That's one of the things. If you're Middle Tennessee, that's why I'm surprised how much they've been passing. They haven't really tried the traditional run game. They got that one great run in the first drive where they kind of drove everybody back. And ever since then, everything else has been on the edges um, for a lot of their run game or it's been passing to the air once again that pass complete to DJ Anglin Chisholm a yard shy of the first down marker he was the one who caught the 45 yard touchdown on the opening drive from Batiato. Yeah Western Kentucky has been doing a great job at mixing up the coverages on Vadiato, so he has to make decisions playing either off coverage sometimes playing press and getting him to try and go in the wrong place which They've done it twice already today, but it's got to be something where you've got to set up this run game like they're doing now to get back to a two-dimensional team and not put so much pressure on the freshman. And they gave Chisholm the uh, first down there, so on first and ten, a nice run for Pizan. And a good lead block running up the left side, and as you see, a little nice little fold block there by the fullback, or we'll call it a wing back right now. That's uh, Will Gilchrist running the H-back position. Longest run of the game, 10 yards and a first down. Short passing again, but a nice pickup on first down to C.J. Windham, finding that tempo once again. Yeah, getting back up to tempo, looking for the off-coverage guy, I think, to make that throw. You don't want to play, throw that pass to a guy who's playing in press, corners playing off, so Windham making, taking three steps and making himself open. And Pieson gets the handoff. Another nice hole inside the 40. Still spinning, still using those legs. He'll mark him at the 37-yard line. Pickup of nine and another first down. The one thing I love about it, offensive lineman running. When they see the legs still churning on your running back, get up there, try and knock a guy off and let him break free. Great hustle by the offensive line from Middle Tennessee. And with... Four seconds left in this first quarter. Uh, stoppage in play because a Western Kentucky player is down. That's Amari Alexander, the nickelback. And just you know, takes it to the ground. Another guy, you, you're thinking about how um, how he got here, right? Was in, was in Eastern Kentucky. He decided to change directions. <laughs> Went from east to west and uh, has, been, has been the starter for this team. You know, he saw what 20 20 straight games and, and was registering tackles in two seasons uh there at eastern before he transfers and he's he was up on the burlsworth list former walk-on and now a starter here for this hilltopper defense and that's what they say go west young man right yeah from eastern kentucky to western kentucky and now to the sideline as we finish up the first quarter 
Middle was going to try to get one more playoff before the quarter ended, but that injury timeout will take us to the second. Rick Stockstill's team got off to a great start. Touchdown on their opening drive of the game. But Western Kentucky's reeled off 21 in a row thanks to a couple interceptions. 21-7, Hilltoppers. Hilltopper students on the hill, liking what they saw in the first quarter. 21-7, Western Kentucky lead. Hey, it's time to vote for the fans of the game. And that fan there on the right, that is Angelina, the mother of D'Angelo Malone. Have a feeling she's going to get a few votes. Middle Tennessee fans, I think you're going to go fan number two, which is uh, a gaggle of Middle Tennessee cheerleaders, it looks like. Or fan number one, go to our Twitter account, at Stadium on Twitter, and cast your vote for the fan of the game. We'll reveal the winner a little bit later. That's uh, Mike DeLello into the game for Middle Tennessee as we start this second quarter. The running quarterback, DeLello, got one snap in the first quarter. That was his second snap, and he's still out there. Trying to change things up a little bit for middle and just create some confusion for this defense to see how they respond to it. Well, they let him put it in the air for a short pass. Boy, Peason is just so tough to bring down. That's what we like to call an angry runner. It's an angry, Frank runs angrily. This one's going to come back, though. It's going to be a illegal procedure penalty on Middle Tennessee. Illegal formation, offense, number 74, lined up in the backfield. Five yards comes to the previous spot. Replay second down. That's Steven Lasoya, the left tackle, lined up in the backfield. Max, as an offensive lineman, how you feel about that? That that that, that, that grinds my gears right there, Chris, <laughs> because you know the helmet must break the belt line, even though I know belts are kind of kind of old school <laughs> for football pants, but it must break the waistline of the center. And I get you got you got a good tough task on, on your side, so you're trying to gain your advantage, but you've got to make sure you line up because you lose great plays like that and you cost your team yeah it would have been second and short or third and short I should say now it's going to be third and long because Jimmy Marshall's going down in the backfield Jaden Hunter that twirls him down number six, Jimmy Marshall, line, number yeah. it's a great yeah. job by the DBs right on the edge they know that the wide receivers from out from Middle Tennessee have been coming up and, and blocking for a lot of short screen passes out of the backfield and when you look and you and you see a young quarterback back there you're like He's throwing more swings. He's not really hitting the deep routes. He did it once, but mo a majority of his passes have been around the line of scrimmage, maybe five to six yards, and awaiting for yards after the catch. Now 45 of his 97 yards through the air came on one play, the touchdown pass on the opening drive. Badiato, short play. I wonder if they're going to go for it here because, I mean, that's not a play you call on third down and long. It's now fourth and ten. Right on the edge of field goal range, but still too long for a field goal. Zeke Rankin's long this season is just 32 yards, so the offense still on the field. Yeah, just trying to get something so you make it manageable and 10 yards here because you didn't run a lot of your routes to the sticks, which you'd normally try and do on third down. They need the 27-yard line to keep this drive alive. Safety pressure, pass, intercepted again. Jaden Hunter picks it off. Third interception of the game for the Hilltopper defense. Wow. <laughs> this, we, we talked about Middle Tennessee being the number one takeaway team, but right here, great job. We call this double barrel. They bring two linebackers up, they run them on a cross, and then they bring the third guy in, creating a trio, blitz up the middle. Vadiato gets plastered as he releases this, trying to throw to win, trying to throw to Ali. And once again, another bracket in the middle of the field. Guy underneath the Jaden Hunter. The ball gets tipped up in the air, and he's right there, right place, right time. And Western Kentucky, three turnovers already, and we're not even 18 minutes into this game. And two of those interceptions went off the fingertips of Middle Tennessee wide receivers. They throw against the blitz, and what an adjustment out there at the 35-yard line. That's Mitchell Tinsley who had to turn around last second to make that catch. Yeah, Tinsley expecting the back shoulder fade and then does a full 180 to come back to the other side and make a fingertip grab. And 
Bengals swing it out to the sideline. Positive yardage once again. That's Malachi Corley. Go back to that adjustment here, Max. Tinsley, look at that. Coming on the backside, it's like an out route, and then he's expecting it to come. Because usually when you run it out, you're throwing it to the sideline. It's the receiver or nobody, but Zappi sings it a little bit to the inside of there, and a great job of just turning around and snapping his head around at the last minute and making the grab. Chance for Western Kentucky to really take control of this game early. After trailing 7-0, they've reeled off 21 in a row. And Middle Tennessee is reeling. Screen pass once again, good blocking. First down and then some for Jarrett Stearns. Nice wide receiver screen. You bring Joey Beljan out there as an additional guy to block and is executed perfectly. Jarrett Stearns sitting, sitting behind his receiver in a stacked position and making a great play. And of course, he's, you can't hit him on the first contact. It's always a second or third guy and he's able to get the first down. Fourth catch for 56 yards. Jarrett Stearns, the nation's leading wide receiver. They fake the handoff, and that pass incomplete. It's a good thing it wasn't a good pass. You wonder if Bailey Zappi, maybe last second, decided to throw that a little bit wayward so it couldn't be picked off for six. Yeah, Stanley was sitting right on top of Stern. Stern only running like a little short stop route, and Stanley kind of making a beat and come down on the ball. You see the decision, he's like, oh, nope, not going to do that. I've seen this story before. <laughs> Stanley, was, Stanley was coming, so put it off of your receiver. Second down and 10. Corley comes in motion. Looks right. Now scanning the field, evacuating the pocket, and dumps it out of bounds. Chased on the play by Marley Cook, the defensive tackle. Yeah, Cook, another freshman out there making plays at this point in the year uh, for the team. And just great job of really just blocking up everybody. It was funny, the receivers at the bottom of the screen were kind of setting up with a, a decoy screen look. And I guess the, the routes were happening at the top of the screen. But Marley Cook able to break through of the blocking and put pressure on Bailey Zappi. On third down and 10, Zappi looking to the sideline. And now with three on the play clock, gets the snap. Throws it over the middle, complete, but short of the first down because of the good tackle by Trey Fluellen. Fluellen flew to make that tackle. Gerald Stern's coming in, running, running an out route, almost like a drag to the sideline. But Fluellen's not fooled, and we talked about Gerald Stern being able to shake guys. You can't shake a guy that's, that's draped on you like a cape. It's, it's tough to do that. What do you think about them going for it here, at least showing like they're going for it on fourth down and five yards here? Well, too close to punt unless you're going to let time run out in this situation. No harm, no foul, the way your defense has been playing with three interceptions. Pass dropped. And a turnover on downs. The Blue Raiders with a big stop on defense. They forced a couple of punts already. They forced a turnover on downs. So really credit to Middle Tennessee's defense for keeping them in this game despite those three interceptions early. Yeah, and a great job playing on top of it. And Diedrich Stanley done it again and again. We'll be back soon. Campus Insider is your place for the latest news and information in college football Wednesday at 6 o'clock Eastern time on Stadium. Cam Smith, Michael Felder, and Matt Fortuna give an insight on the landscape of college football. Coming up at halftime, we're going to talk about the shifting landscape of Conference USA. Big news this week with the addition of four programs to Conference USA. These two programs still in Conference USA, still in a little bit of limbo as Mike DeLello takes that for seven yards on first down. Reports out there that Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee are being courted by the MAC. But for now, one of five remaining teams in Conference USA and nine when you add the four teams that joined this week in Conference USA hoping to keep these two schools. Very valuable programs. That pass complete for the first down. Yeah, C.J. Windham makes the catch. It's DeLello at quarterback now after the 
third interception thrown by Nick Vadiato on the last drive. Yeah, trying to change it up, probably trying to cool the freshman off. He's probably got a little bit of nerves there. You don't want him to get inside of his head, so give him a little relief, and DeLello's doing a good job. Oh, what a catch. One-handed grab by Wyndham. Caught that with his left hand. There is a flag at the 34-yard line. I hope this is another offensive pre-snap penalty. Receiver offense number 53. Five yard penalty. Well, that's Lance Robinson. Yeah, legal man downfield. Offensive lineman, you, you can't play the confused look. You know, can't go like Billy Bob and uh, Varsity Blues. There's no foul for an eligible player downfield. Result to play is second down. They said no foul. Oh, yeah, you see. So what happened was he was trying to sell the block. It kind of stumbled forward a couple extra yards. You get a two-yard halo kind of on, on passes or screens. So yeah, as but luckily they picked it up. Joe Laring was making that announcement. Must have heard a shout from one of the other officials, and they decide that that was not a penalty. So the catch stands. And that one's dropped. Boy, how about that? Wyndham catches one with one hand and then drops an easy one. Drops the one with two hands. <laughs> yeah, go, go figure. I mean, but DeLello's doing a good job keeping pace, right? Easy throws. He's not, he's not having to read too much, and he's keeping this offense going, which is something you kind of want. You need that spark. So DeLello is your changeup guy to where you can run and pass it with him there at quarterback, at least for short distances. Middle Tennessee 0 for the last five on third downs. DeLello keeps it, has running room, and looks to have the first down. They'll give it to him. Another flag on the field again, another penalty. There's a flag on the play. It looks like. Holding, holding. Offense, number nine. Ten-yard coach in the middle of run. Replay third down. Jaron Pierce on the hold on the outside. Oh, the momentum keeps getting just shifted back and forth. Take another look, Jaron Pierce yep, has that left shoulder pinned, and you see, yep, once you see the shoulder pads underneath, that's an easy call for the back judge to make. I mean, he's, he's right there in front of, oh, and his shoulder pad comes out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I missed that on the call. My goodness, <laughs> that thing was popping right out. Yeah, if, I mean, if, you, if, if you're going to have a penalty, that's the type of penalty. Just, just take his jersey off. You know, <laughs> the heck with jersey exchanges at the end of the game like in the NFL. Let me just give it to me right now. It's from the spot of the foul, though. So it's third down and eight from the 36-yard line. What could be four down territory once again. Lolello faked the screen pass. Now going long. His man has a couple steps. It's a tough. Yusuf Ali. Mike DeLello. Drop eight, so what? They had a three-man rush. Offensive line blocks it up perfectly. And DeLello delivers a nice, deep, arcing shot to Yusuf Ali. And Yusuf Ali hauls it in. And I hate to say this, Chris, but we got a ball game again. I hate to say this, too. That was Vadiato who came into the game. They're switching quarterbacks on, like, every other play. And we're dealing with some glare issues. You don't want to hear about our issues. Yeah, you don't want to hear about our issues. That's our excuse. Just no middle score. That's the most important thing. Extra point is good in Middle Tennessee. Big stop on defense, trying to weather those three interceptions thrown by Vadiato. This one right on the money going through his progressions. Just a great job looking it off and drop eight, and you drop it right in the bread basket there. Middle, down and one. Welcome back to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where Middle Tennessee's just scored and made this a one-score game. And let's just show you a replay of the game. Yusuf Ali sitting at the top of the screen here. And you have Mike Vadiato looking out to the left, kind of making what we would like to call a fake. And so he looks off that safety. Yusuf Ali is still running up the field, and he just blows past the safety, the cornerback, and Mike Vadiato turns his head back, throws a nice arcing pass for the touchdown. 
touchdown, and we've got a ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this thing could have gotten out of hand. Middle Tennessee's defense done a good job with three stops in this first half against that powerful Western Kentucky Mr. offense. Mr. Jamal Carruthers returns that. And Western Kentucky's offense back out on the field from the 30-yard line. First down and 10. And uh, two touchdowns for Bailey Zappi, but just 10 for 20 on the day. 50% came in at a 71% clip this season. Yeah, the Middle Tennessee State defense is doing a great job of creating pressure, but also the secondary staying on these receivers, not letting them get wide open. Stearns makes that catch, but can't make the first man miss. Good open field tackle by Quincy Riley. Riley does a great job. This is one of the things, when you get into a team that likes to pass the ball a lot, four and five wide receivers, you've got to be great on the perimeter. And right now, these de the defensive backs have been doing a great job of sticking to these receivers and not giving them cushion. Stearns already setting a new single season record for Western Kentucky with his 99th catch. And Western still has three more regular season games to go after this. That one too high for Mitchell Tinsley, who was upended by DeCorian Patterson. Third down and nine. And that one, I'm glad there was no pass or no, no type of penalty flag called in. He was already making that decision before it was over the top on Tinsley. So once you make that decision, you just have to go at that point. Yeah, Patterson didn't even know, I'm sure, if the ball was over his head or if he made the catch or what. Yeah, it's like make sure he does not catch it. That's the, that's your main objective at the defensive back position. Third and nine, going to be a free play. Zappi takes a shot down the sideline, incomplete. And they draw the pass interference yeah, call so as well. Play. They're going to decline the offside penalty, take the pass interference penalty, and that'll be an automatic first down. One of the toughest things when you're jumping offsides, trying to get the extra read on someone. That was Jonathan Butler that jumped off sides, coming off the edge. There are two fouls, both by the defense. Offside, defense, number four. The penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense, number 33. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, let's see the chain of events. Jonathan Butler jumps offside on the hard count, tries to get back, and that's tough because you're like, okay, now I've got to make sure I don't get beat over the top. And then you get this play by DeCorian Patterson where he's holding the inside edge of Tinsley, and that's an easy call for the side judge to throw that flag. So just compounded injuries are already was a bad play. So at the 45-yard line, new set of downs for Western Kentucky with 8.22 to go here first half. Screen pass caught by Stearns, the 100th catch of the season by Jarrett Stearns, tops in the country. Only two yards on first down. And the defense is doing a really great job when, when Western Kentucky gets into those stacked positions and you see Stearns behind, you have a high likelihood he's going to get the ball. And they're playing up on the press and they're making the plays to make sure they minimize that damage because, like I said, he can, he can wiggle in open space, but you got you got to put him in a phone booth. Middle Tennessee showing some different looks here from the edge. Geronte Davis comes in now showing some linebacker pressure they'll hand it off Noah Whittington into middle territory bluff not carried middle Tennessee trying to kind of come up and show almost like a cover one look Reed Blankenship is playing in the linebacker position everybody else in the line of scrimmage and they kind of bail out the last second but Western hands the ball off, so when guys are going backwards, you want to go forward, then they get some extra, some great yardage on that run play. Third down and a long two. And they'll throw the screen out to Stearns. Picks up the first down, 40-yard line. Ray Blankenship made the stop. That was that, that was two man right there, but they were they were over there because we were running a double stacks again right and left and Stearns whips the one block that, that could have been called a holding that could have been called a holding by the Western Kentucky receiver, but he gets his hand off in just enough time. Another flag is out and we might have a penalty on Quincy Riley the cornerback. 
And that's tough working up against Daywood Davis. For the guy we thought was going to get that holding call on the screenplay. <laughs> Pass interference. Defense number three. 15 yard penalty for the clear spot. That'll make first down. And he ends up drawing. He ends up drawing the penalty on that play. And it's right at the last second. See the contact, puts the hands on the chest. And that is what is easy to call. And once again, we have we have the referee with with, with the lightning arm. That was, that, was, that, was a, that was a cross platform throw there with the flag. <laughs> he can go opposite hash. Out pattern. Nick Stock still wasn't happy with that. I'm not sure that was catchable. But two pass interference penalties. And Western Kentucky's knocking on the door at the 25 yard line, first and 10. Zappi. Incomplete. The coverage from DeCorian Patterson, who was flagged for one of those pass interference penalties. A little bit of a late break, but he got there right at the time the ball arrived and jarred that out. And just a great job. So the way they set it up is they ran three wide receivers into the boundary in the long side of the field. They had the ISO and DeCorian Patterson solo. Like, oh my goodness, I got to make this happen. And what a great play he makes coming on the inside half to cut the receiver and quarterback connection. Ben Ratzlaff, the intended receiver on that play. Second and ten. Whittington gets the carry and is taken down Whittington around the carry. neck for a loss of one. Salem Wood making that tackle for a loss. And the defense for his, the errors that have been have just done a great job. You see Zalen Woods whipping the block on the backside and then the pursuit angle to take down Whittington. Third and 11, they're gonna get another free play. Zappi to the end zone! Incomplete, it was dropped by Josh Stearns. So close, fingertips. Offside, Almost uh, had it. Defense number 28. Five yard pass for the spot. Still third down. But the offside still works. You still get five yards on that. You get the play back. B but the, the one thing that middle has to get on top of is this hard count. When you're a secondary support guy, you can't jump off sides. And Josh Sturz had it just. The contact with the ground, he looks Third it in, two hands on it, pulls it to his chest, kind of bobbles it at the end, and then it. Zappi didn't know that the ball was dropped, and yes. he ran all the way to the end zone to celebrate with Josh Stearns. Reminded me of Evan McPherson, <laughs> field goal in Cincinnati a couple oh, weeks boy. ago. So third down and six, they keep it on the ground. And it's the first carry of the game for Adam Cofield. And the field goal unit is out. Just get a little bit more yardage, put it a little bit closer in that situation. They missed an they know they missed an opportunity there on the free play. So just get something to kind of shift the balance back. You don't want to go for fourth and not get it again. So let's put some points on the board. Braden Narvison from 35 yards out, a great kicker. Hasn't missed from inside 41 this season. And he knocks that right through. He's now 14 for 14 inside 41 yards. And he'll tell you about it. 24 14. Toppers now lead by 10. Western Kentucky just kicked a field goal, and they're now up by 10 on Middle Tennessee. 5.24 to go here in the first. The story of this one for Middle Tennessee. Interceptions, three of them, and penalties, six of them. Western Kentucky doesn't have a turnover, doesn't have a penalty. And that's why they're up 10, even though they've been outgained by 54 yards so far. You know, Western Kentucky has done a great job of just managing. And, and here's the thing, Middle Tennessee's defense has only given up 10 points. You know, when you think about it, um, as far as long field drives, they've been able to stop, force punts, turnovers on downs. The offense just hasn't been sputtering, but a great job the last drive to put a score in. So let's see what they can do to answer this field goal by Western Kentucky. That one is going to land in the end zone, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. This is the first game of our doubleheader, starting here in Conference USA, heading out to the Mountain West 
this evening as UNLV takes on New Mexico from Albuquerque. Ari Wolf, Max Brown standing by for the call. That one is at 7 Eastern right here on Stadium. Welcome to the game. So you're telling me there's another Max running the color analyst position. There's another Chris doing play by play for Stadium as well. That is that true. Game. Chris Foster's. We only hire Chris's and Max's and Ari's. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, we're good. And there's a Noah. Oh, speaking of Noah, Whoa. nowhere to go as Darius Ship bursts through the line and makes a huge hit for a loss of four on first down. He almost took the handoff. <laughs> well, he tried to take his head off, but he also almost took the handoff there. And it's amazing that the right guard did not come down <laughs> like he's down in the three point stance. You've got to block this guy. But I don't know if they're trying to run a wham block on him. But Darius Ship came through and blew that up before he could even think about getting started. Yeah, there was a wham, all right. <laughs> it was. Badiato under pressure and goes down. Sack for Jeremy Darvin, his first of the season. And this is just a great job of executing from the defensive tackle. Jeremy Darvin sitting there coming into what we call the A gap, working on center and guard, trying to create a pinch point, and then he bounces off at the last second and takes Vadiato down by the legs. And this Western Kentucky defense is playing solid all day. But right here in these last two plays, they have been in the backfield terrorizing middle. Darvin, the redshirt senior from Nashville. Which maybe is just an hour south of here. Maybe a little angry he didn't get offered by middle, maybe. I don't know. The Tennessee thing. Murphy's bro, a little closer to Nashville than Bowling Green. Hit as he throws. That's going to be pick number four. Beanie Bishop had a pick six earlier. He'll get it to the 10 yard line. And Badiato was hit as he was releasing that ball and you remember the game we used to play as kids on Nintendo called Duck Hunt <laughs> well right here Darvin who made the previous sack gets an arm on it ball flies in the air and then Beanie Bishop breaks off and he realizes hey balls in the air I got to go get this jumps up a little short up and returns it and once again another short field for this Western Kentucky offense to operate on Fourth interception of the game for Western Kentucky. Second for Beanie Bishop. And another short field for this Western Kentucky offense. 3.44 to go here, first half. Zappi, one on one coverage, incomplete. Went back shoulder. Mitchell Tinsley, the intended receiver. And just a solid coverage there by Teldrick Ross playing, playing man up on Tinsley and Zappi just he threw it to the inside I thought he should have thrown it to the outside shoulder but threw it to the inside which made it easier for Teldrick Ross to uh, to get in there and get a hand and, and force it out second and goal it'd be huge for middle if they can force a field goal attempt here keep this a two score game here late in the first half Zappi over the middle complete Tinsley breaks a tackle Tinsley touchdown Western Kentucky keeping the pressure and the gas on Bailey Zappi with his second touchdown toss of the day, a third touchdown toss of the day. And boy, oh boy, this is something is breaking wide open for Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee, four turnovers and two of those inside the 20 yard line in the red zone for the opposing offense. So Bailey Zappi's numbers don't look as eye gouging because he's gotten two short fields thanks to his defense. Now 21 points off turnovers when you count the pick six. And it's 31 to 14 as Narvison hits the extra point. Zappi with touchdown passes to Davis, Corley, and now Tinsley. And his name's not Stearns. His favorite right. one, who has 11 on the season, has not seen the end zone yet. But what a great job run it, running a drag route across the middle and kind of pinballs off of the defender and keeps the legs churning. And that is a tutty for Zappi. 
third of the game and let me count them up for the season. Give me a few minutes because it's a lot of them. Yeah, carry 36 the on the season. Okay, that was it. Carry the three, add the four. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, they're, keep, they're keeping their drive summary down, too. That's nine seconds on the score, so it keeps the average uh, well down. Yeah, they had a drive earlier in the game for a touchdown that was a minute and 38 seconds. That one will that come out to the 25. Point. Longest drive of the game. I think yeah, it was <laughs> the field goal drive was 3:38. Oh, okay, okay. So but they've had uh, a 36-second touchdown drive as well. That was after the uh, other interception that set them up in the red zone. And for Rick Stock, still, you know, it's, knew it was going to be an uphill battle without Chase Cunningham in this game. He's out for the season. He was playing so well at quarterback, and having to start the freshman Nick Vadiato, who. Yeah, you know, hasn't done too bad of a job considering the circumstances has a couple of touchdown passes but four interceptions two of those off the fingertips of his own receivers. And keep it on the ground here. And that is one of the main reasons why you've put Vadiato kind of out there and exposed him is because the run game has not been established whether it's offensive line whether it's the intent to run like we saw one good run that 10 yard run and then of course the rugby tight scrum to get the first down in the first drive of the game but other than that Western Kentucky has been blocking them up been forcing the pressure and forcing them into these longer passing situations 14 carries 41 yards so far on the ground and that one's on the ground almost another interception will ignite Right there, you can't you can't put the ball in that tight of a space. Um, that's playing with fire. But the good thing is, Vadiato's not deterred by this. You see the move to the inside, and you know Will Ingnott just kind of just takes a little step to the left and just gets right in front of Pierce to cause that confusion because he was trying to run a switch route with the other slot receiver, but Ignat sitting in zone doesn't go with the man. He just sits in his area. Third down and eight. And Badiato throws it short. Almost picked off on the deflection. Antoine Kincaid was right there. They'll force a punt. Yeah, the receivers for Middle Tennessee are getting fingers on the ball. They just can't haul it in, whether it's just a little coming up on them, a little bit hot, or a little bit outside of their range. And Western's normally taking advantage of that, but right there, yeah, you know, you could at least rub your brow and say, okay, we didn't give them the we didn't give them the short field again. We actually get to punt it and create more space for this Western Kentucky offense. Kyle Ulbrich to punt. Averaging about 45 yards a kick this season. And this one taken at the 34-yard line. And good open field tackle by Trey Fluellen. On the return of D'Angelo Wilson. Wilson on the return. Yeah, grad transfer there from uh, Bowling Green University. I know, don't get it confused with Bowling Green, Kentucky. The only school here is Western. It's Bowling Green in Ohio. Uh -huh. Normal field here for Western Kentucky. Let's see what they can do. Middle has done a great job when they've had grass to work with. It's tough when you're getting the ball in, in your own red zone and trying to st stop guys out. But here is where it's more manageable. Let's see how Metal can answer what has been just a dominating performance uh, by Western Kentucky so far in this first half. Pass wide to the mark. Average starting field position for Western Kentucky, the 50-yard line. Well, that's how you put up 31 points when you only have half the field to work with. You don't have to worry about the other half. Those other 50 behind you, nah, they don't count. We're just going to start at midfield. Yeah, Tyson Hilton last year had that really good defense. The offense wasn't there, though. Didn't have the, the great quarterback play. But this season, they've got it all, and that's why they feel like they've got a good chance to not only win the division, but win Conference USA, maybe get another crack at UTSA in the championship game. False start. False start. 89, offense. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. 
That's a that's Joey Beljan jumping a second too soon. He's over there in the three point. It's tough, right? I, I get you know receiver can't really see the ball, trying to guess. But when you're on the line of scrimmage, you can see that that center's outstretched hand moving underneath his body. So second and 15 after the penalty. 2.34 to go here, first half. Both teams have all three timeouts. And that pass complete. It's Jared Stearns once again. Finally wrestled to the ground. Swallowed up by DQ Thomas. Come from the linebacker position, getting on his high hooker to speed out there. And a great job on the press by Quincy Riley to press into that receiver that's trying to lead block for Jarrett Stearns. That creates the bounce to the sideline and gives Stearns not enough place to run. And DQ Thomas able to swoop in and make the tackle. Third down in nine. And Middle Tennessee has, has given Western Kentucky several first downs on third and long in this second quarter. They set up the screenplay. Noah Whittington has the first down and then some. To the 40 yard line. Perfect play call. Perfect play call at the perfect time. You had all out blitz coming up on the line of scrimmage. DQ Thomas coming in. He, he engages and sees the running back running past him. He's like, oh no, I got to get going, but not enough to catch up to Whittington to take him down and first down for the Hilltoppers. That's the first year offensive coordinator for Western Kentucky, Zach Kitley, just 30 years old. Came over from Houston Baptist along with Bailey Zappi and the Stearns brothers. Whittington now on the ground. Heads out of bounds after a pickup of three or four yards on first down. Kitley made a name for himself at Texas Tech under Cliff Kingsbury. And Kingsbury said, I know he had a big impact on Patrick Mahomes and was critical in his development. Yes, Kitley played a big hand in Patrick Mahomes' development. And he's not much older than Patrick Mahomes. No, he's not much older. And you'd say, arguably, ah, the best player in, in the NFL right now, Patrick Mahomes. And this offense looks very similar to Cliff Kingsbury's. Um, you know, he's made a couple of alterations since making it to the league. But for the most part, this is, this is what Cliff Kingsbury was cloned into, which is the air raid type offense. We have a Middle Tennessee player down right now after the contact. That's Diedrich Stanley, the safety. And that, that's a huge blow because Stanley, remember when we were talking about when, when Middle was making those stops and forcing punts and turnovers on downs, Stanley was usually the guy forcing the PBUs against the receivers. And, uh, you know, only a freshman, but his impact in this game, you know, we've called his name a couple of times for what he's done. And a lot of pain there as the trainer looks at his right leg. Stanley coming in to make that tackle. He went low. Caught. Yeah, knee gets folded up underneath there. Kind of gets double crunched. The offensive lineman Spencer coming from one side and his own guy kind of friendly fire kind of both kind of compressed down on him as that knee and that ankle is bent underneath him. Now they're looking down there. That is the lower part of that right leg. And the knee can bend a lot more than what the what the ankle is. There's a lot of bones in that ankle uh, region that don't quite move as much. They're a lot less less mobile than the than other parts of the body. 90 seconds to go here, first half, ahead of a third down and five for Western Kentucky. They have a 17 point lead in this game. And Stanley on his feet. They are helping him on both sides come off the field. No weight on that right leg. He's very ginger needing that help. Assume he's going straight over to the uh, blue tent to get further evaluation, get that shoe off and see what they're working with. 
Because more often than not, Copper. tape is all over those ankles. So it's tough to Blue even <laughs> try and right. diagnose anything. All right, so third down and five. They need the 31-yard line for a first down. And pressure off the edge, and Zappi gets rid of it, completes it. Whittington not able to get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard, but that could have been a lot worse. Uh, the pressure was on him. Western is the one using a timeout here ahead of this fourth down. It'll be fourth and about five. And you see the pressure coming from the top of the screen. And boy, oh boy, was, was he coming in a hurry. And that is Geronte Davis coming off the edge in a stand-up backer roll. He just can't pull Bailey down, and Bailey kind of sidearms it out to the running back. Well, we were talking about all the faces coming over from Houston Baptist. Zach Kitley, the offensive coordinator, coming over. And now Jarrett Stearns in his first season already has the single season record for receptions over 100. Josh Stearns, his younger brother, a freshman, they think he's going to be really good. He's not at Jarrett's level yet, but they think he'll get there. Ben Ratzlaff, a grad transfer from Houston Baptist, solid, dependable, and then the guy who holds it all together, Bailey Zappi at quarterback. 26 transfers on this roster. Going forward on fourth and five, and Middle Tennessee comes up with a stop. And a big stop by Quincy Riley. You know, they've been going after the redshirt freshman. I guess they didn't check the resume that he also leads the team in interceptions with four. And he's had very good coverage in, in this game. You know, him, DeCorian Patterson, obviously Stanley who got helped off the field, but they've done a great job of really corralling these receivers. And longer fields have given them that opportunity where they can defend more grass and play a lot tighter to these receivers and really make it tough on Western Kentucky. And they've only given up 183 total yards to Western Kentucky, a team averaging 534. And that pass complete on first down, go to the tight end. Jimmy Marshall, the two touchdown drives have really started like that with short passes to get ahead of the chains on first down for middle. Yeah, and then taking the big plays over the top. Ali and Chisholm both benefiting from that. So hopefully just keep the rhythm going. Stay on schedule. All three timeouts left under a minute now. And some uh, Middle Tennessee players on the bench wanted a, a penalty marker as Yusuf Ali was the intended receiver. Yeah, Yusuf Ali run, running that little sideline deep out, but you know he played underneath. He like dove underneath the defender, so it's tough to try and try and make that call. But I can't. You got to sell it. You got to sell it on the sidelines. Third down and three. And oh, threw it too quick. Jimmy Marshall was not ready for that pass. He was wide open. Badiato could have run for the first down as well. There was a big vacated part in the middle of that field. And looks like they're going to punt it away here on fourth and three. Yeah, we've learned what happens when you have short fields, and Badiato wishes he could have that back. Just put it down one foot, kind of let it sail just a little bit on Marshall. Marshall wide open. There's no reason why you can't put that right on his numbers. Clear lane and vision path, but. I want, I, I want Western to go the long distance. Uh-oh. They'll uh, shift out of the unusual formation. I'm sure Western Kentucky's thinking fake here. Zalen Wood, the biggest personal protector I've ever seen <laughs> on a punt team. Fair catch at the 12-yard line. 42 seconds left. Two timeouts for Western Kentucky. But you're up by 17. It's a quick strike offense, Max. I was about to say, I'm like 42 seconds. That's that. That's 41 more seconds than I would like to get Western Kentucky on the field because we know they can turn it on when they want to. And like you said, what were they averaging? You know, essentially almost what two minutes maybe at the most um, in this game. So. Yeah, I don't put it past them to run some deeper routes and try and see if they can just tack one more on to get this game 
really out of hand for Middle Tennessee. Scoreboard shows just one timeout for Western Kentucky. As Zappi goes down the sideline, incomplete. A little long for Tinsley, who has the last touchdown catch. One of three in this first half for Bailey Zappi. But 28 points off turnovers officially for Western Kentucky. 28 of their 31 coming off the four interceptions. And Teldrick Ross and Reed Blankenship doing a great job of making sure nobody beats them over the top. Whittington beats him up the middle. That'll be a first down. 31 seconds clock stops for the chains to move. Now it starts. Keep it on the ground again. A hurdle. And the ball comes out late. But they'll say he's down. And the clock will continue to run. Reed Blankenship, great job coming up and forcing the issue. This is a team that benefits a lot. You know, so you can't get loose with the football. And Whittington trying to get fancy and jump up in the air, but Reed Blankenship there to put the hand on there and try and force it out. Just knee touches right before he uh, he, hit, he he calls the ball up. Yeah, good call. And that'll take us to halftime. Western Kentucky was down seven right off the bat, but they've got a 31-14 lead here at the half. Western Kentucky with a 31-14 lead at halftime here against Middle Tennessee. Four interceptions for that Western Kentucky defense. They've turned that into 21 points, including a pick six. Well, it's been another extremely interesting week in Conference USA. Of course, we had these nine teams announce before this week that they're going to be leaving Conference USA, several of them to the American, and then Marshall, Old Dominion, and Southern Miss to the Sun Belt. So wondering what, what's Conference USA going to do? Judy McLeod, the commissioner, has been saying, we're looking to add teams. And they did late this week. So on the top there, you see the five teams remaining in Conference USA, Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky, reportedly being courted by the MAC, but, but right now, uh, they are in Conference USA, and Conference USA adding a couple of FCS programs this week, and Liberty a huge get, certainly, as well. Now, Judy McLeod releasing the statement on the additions. We're incredibly excited about adding these four new members and feel there is tremendous upside in these moves for our conference. This is a quality mix of established and emerging universities that provide us with a compelling group to continue to build with, focusing on competing for and winning championships well into the future. Liberty, Jacksonville State, Sam Houston, and New Mexico State, the four teams being added to Conference USA. That's Max Starks. I'm Chris Hassel. Max, what do you think of the additions by Conference USA this week? Well, I think I think you have to look no further than Liberty. Mm -hmm. Getting Liberty in the last two years alone, what they've done for football at the FBS level has been remarkable. A team that's today playing against Ole Miss. So there's a draw there with Hugh Freeze and what he's been able to do with that program. But you also bring in a lot of other non-revenue generating sports that get attention. This team has great golf team, great swimming, so they're a competitive group. But I look at the New Mexico State. Geographically, that's going to put a, a, a tax on the conference and on these schools for traveling all those sports that they're going to have to compete with. Jacksonville State, you get, you get why you want them in there. They're in the Alabama area. You're losing UAB. So I think it's a good move to have something. I think they still need to add something else to that or be able to make sure that they can keep the five that are still in this conference, make sure that nobody else is trying to pull and poach from them because you got to have at least six teams to be considered a champion, to have a championship game. And it sounds like Conference USA is still looking to potentially add teams. If they can keep Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee, that's nine right there and you're looking pretty good that question is still up in the air conference usa wants to keep them we've got the second half of this game coming up here at halftime just a few minutes away from the start of the second half western kentucky with a 17 point lead on middle tennessee even though they've been outgained by the blue raiders who jumped out of the board first opening drive of the game and it was the freshman Nick Vadiato finding DJ England Chisholm for 45 yards. Also found a touchdown connection in the second quarter as well, but four interceptions. That's the story of the first half, turning to 21 Western Kentucky points. 
Yeah, you know, thrown into the bracket coverage and freshman becoming freshman in this moment for Vadiato. Uh, misdirection, miscommunication um, between Wyndham and between uh, Vadiato leads to that interception, which returned for a touchdown. And then, of course, Bra Bailey Zappi, the man of the hour, you know, he hasn't had many opportunities. He hasn't thrown it, but when he has, it's been for scores to three different receivers. You see Tinsley there on the drag route going in. And that's been the tale of this first half. More second half action coming up soon as Blue Raiders come to Hilltop Country. Shadows overcoming the field now as we get set to start the second half. Take a look at the first half stats in uh, Middle Tennessee. Outgained Western Kentucky by two yards, but penalties and turnovers, huge. Yeah, the bottom of that of that stat line is what the difference in this game and why it's not closer and why it's more looking like closer to a blowout is just because you can't turn it over. Of those four turnovers, one's a pick six and the other two are inside the red zone. Right. You can't do that if you, if you want to play with this team that's Western Kentucky and the offense that they possess. And some really costly ter uh, penalties as well that kept drives alive on third down and long plays. Scott Payne to boot it away for Middle Tennessee to start this second half. And that's Beanie Bishop running up under it. Bishop had a pick six in the first half. And uh, it might be the worst starting field position of the day for Western Kentucky. Their average start in the first half was the 50 yard line. Now let's see what type of adjustments. Let's see if this Blue Raider defense that's tops in the country and takeaways can kind of put some pressure on Bailey Zappi and force some turnovers on their own because we've seen what Western Kentucky did with their turnover opportunities. Middle needs to get back into a rhythm. You have to change and it has to be sudden change. A block kick, an interception, a fumble recovery, something to really enthuse this squad. Good run on first down for Western Kentucky. Whittington. Noah Whittington. And finally whistled dead two yards short of the first down. This Middle Tennessee defense had forced 25 takeaways entering this game. They were averaging over three takeaways a game, but zero in that first half. And credit to Bailey Zappi and this Western Kentucky offense. The mistakes have been small mistakes. 17 for 33, 159 yards and three touchdowns. On second and two, they stay on the ground, and that's going to be a TFL. DQ Thomas gets in the backfield and gets Whittington to the ground. Yeah, what was going to be seemingly a third and shorts, now a third and medium here for Western Kentucky. And, you know, one of the bright spots you look at on this defense, outside of the two penalties on third downs, when it hasn't been a penalty, they've been able to hold Western Kentucky at bay. Not a high conversion percentage on third downs for this Western Kentucky squad outside of penalty. Two for seven on third downs this afternoon and evening. And on third and four, that pass complete. I don't know how it got through to Jared Stearns. Looked like it had pick six written all over it. Yeah, Trey Flewellen tried his best to get that outstretched hand. He was trying to get those fingertips to grow at the last second, but great just throw and arc by Bailey Zappi to get it in there and Jared Stearns to haul it in and get the first down. It's a 16-yard pickup, Stearns now 10 catches in this game for 93 yards. Whittington. Wrestles forward, Jonathan Butler on the tackle, pickup of four. Western Kentucky going with the keep away option here. A lot more rush. They're trying to take time off of the clock. They passed their average time of possessions on scores for drives. Trying to milk it, trying to, trying to create less opportunities for middle and uh, doing a good job of just keeping the chains moving and keeping the clock going. Three score game, opening drive, second half. Western up 17 and looking for more. And that is Kyle Robichaux, the freshman from Columbus, Georgia. He's been a good uh, number three back 
for Western Kentucky of late. Just his 33rd carry of the season, about 150 yards. Third down and three. And even though there's not eye-popping numbers because we look at the passing, they do hand the ball off a lot, Western, and the backs just take advantage. They just spread it between guys, so there's not one guy you can depend on. It's running backs more so by committee between Cofield, Whittington, and Robichaud. From the 45-yard line on third and three, Zappi over the middle, wide open, Jarrett Stearns. Zappi's just so calm, cool, and collected back there. Great job, offensive line. Then Jarrett Stearns coming across on the crossing route, just waits for him to clear the clutter of the middle of the field, and he puts it right on the eight. Seventh game this season for Stearns with 100 plus yards. As we get a timeout on the field. And we'll take a quick timeout here on Stadium as Western Kentucky has it first and 10 approaching the red zone again. A big red down there having himself a day. Hilltoppers up 34, uh, 31 to 14 as they look for their fourth consecutive win. Still keep voting for the fan of the game. We'll get you the winner a little bit later. Just go to Twitter, at Stadium, and cast your vote. Big Red, uh, a part of, of the fan number one that we have. The kids there. Fan number two is uh, Middle Tennessee cheerleading squad. Fan number three, that is the mother of D'Angelo Malone, Angelina. Proud mama. Malone, the senior from Atlanta. Vocal leader of this team and the most talented player on this team, according to the coaching staff. Bailey Zappi's going to the end zone. He's got him. Touchdown, Toppers. Daywood Davis, his second of the day. And coming out of the tight, uh, coming out of the timeout. This, this is something that a lot of great offenses do. Is it's like, you know what? Where we're at in the field, why not take a shot for the end zone? And Bailey Zappi, Zach Kidley said, you know what, let's take that shot. Daywood Davis already had that one uh, banked touchdown, so to speak, already in the pocket from the first half. And just a perfect touch throw on the seam route, dropping it, what we like to call, in the bread basket to Daywood Davis. Easy thing for him to run underneath and another score for this Hilltopper offense. And another one of those transfers, but not from Houston Baptist. You mentioned earlier from Oregon, Mario Cristobal, the head coach there, called him the most unselfish guy he's ever coached. High praise for Mario Cristobal and knowing all the talent they bring into Oregon every single year. And for that young man to go find an opportunity, because obviously Oregon, you see them in the top four at the first initial college football playoff rankings, you know, to find it here and get that quarterback, Bailey Zappi, and it's paying off. So great job by Zappi to find Daywood Davis, and of course, Daywood Davis to go in and make the grab once again. And Western Kentucky rolling now. Could be a, a fourth consecutive win and fourth straight blowout victory following that heartbreaking last second loss here to UTSA. They went on the road, beat Old Dominion by 23, and they beat FIU by 15, and they beat Charlotte by, let me do the quick math here, 45 minus 13, 32. And now today, up by 24 points early on in the third. And you think that of their losses, only one was embarrassing, and that was, of course, to the team that was also in the top four in Michigan State. That's the only one that was outside. Everything else has been a score or less, mm -hmm. or a touchdown or less, I should say. Um, very tight game. So Western Kentucky, you look at it, you know, a little bit more time would have given you <laughs> a lot different result, but they're doing good today. Just finished a seven place, 74 yard scoring drive in 339. Those losses at Army by three, at home here against Indiana by two, at home here against UTSA by six. And you mentioned that uh, Michigan State game, they lost by 17 in that one, 48 to 31. And Yusuf Ali on the reception, turns on the burners, and then, boy, takes a big hit. I don't know what he was really trying to do. It looked like he was trying to somehow hurdle the entire Western Kentucky defense. 
on his way up, he got crunched. That's a lot of confidence. I got five bodies. You know what? I'm going to try and leap over all five of them. <laughs> and it ended up looking like he was doing a, a, a flying jump kick, a martial arts <laughs> at the end of it. <laughs> Mike DeLello, the quarterback for Middle Tennessee. It's uh, mostly been Nick Vadiato at quarterback, but he's thrown those four interceptions. DeLello, three for four, 21 yards through the air, and three carries, 17 yards. And Middle just needs to make sure. Oh, yeah, you saw it. Fumble on the turnover, and that's another turnover for Western Kentucky. Count them up. Five. And oh. Jaden Hunter with the recovery. That's two turnover recoveries by Jaden Hunter. One was the interception, and now the fumble recovery. And as we look at it again, he's trying to pull it. He wanted to pull it from underneath, but Petaway cl clamped down on it and you couldn't pull it back out and you get the ball squirting out and then after that it's just bouncing bodies on top of that ball and western comes away with it and yet another plus side turnover this one not in the red zone like like two of the previous five but still in striking distance you're you're in what we call the high red zone chris high red the 33 yard line for the big red hilltoppers Looking to put this game away early in the third. Zappi going for the jugular. Incomplete. Good coverage on the play as that pass was intended for Craig Burt Jr. It was uh, DeCorian Patterson on the coverage and Rick Stock still the reaction after the fumble. Oh, yeah, it's too bad too because Middle Tennessee really had things going with Chase Cunningham before his injury last week. Cunningham. 16 touchdown passes, just three interceptions on the season, but he is done for the season. Yeah, and before that, you had Hockman starting out at the beginning of the season, mm -hmm. and you felt good about where Cunningham was in his development. Then now he's down, and now you're essentially to your fourth quarterback um, so far in eight games of the season. A tackle by Reed Blankenship in space. Third down now for this Western Kentucky offense. And some confusion defensively for Middle Tennessee. Not sure if they thought they had 12 or 11 on the field, but they get it figured out. <laughs> Mason Brooks, the right tackle, moved. They didn't see it. And then they started pointing at him, and then he started to fall backwards. False start, 77, offense. Five-yard penalty, and they start down. Listen, I've been there. I've been there. You're trying to hold your water. You get the first flesh. You're like, no, nope, no, nope, just snap it, snap it. You got to, ah, they couldn't snap it. They couldn't snap it. Yeah, once you get on that back spike in the uh -huh. back part of your heel, it, it's a bad day. Because you're trying to reach with, the, with like your toes to get back in and you just can't. And then it's just leaning tower of, of, of false starts at that point. Let's see when you're 305 pounds. Zappy wide open man, Mitchell Tinsley, first and goal. Great job out of the trips. You know, you had double stack receivers, and then you had a receiver coming in motion, and Tinsley just runs kind of the, the inside of the three routes. And now he's going to run it. Bailey Zappi is in on the ground. Third rushing touchdown of the season for Bailey Zappi. And that has now 40 total touchdowns for Bailey Zappi this season. 37 through the air, three on the ground. And we have a down hilltopper in the end zone. There's be a receiver. I don't know if that's Daywood Davis. Can't get a clear. Yeah, it no, is. It, it, it is. And he's had a big day. Two touchdown grabs. And those were his only two catches, two for 45 yards, both of them touchdowns. Had a 28-yarder and a 17-yarder. And Tyson Helton now making the long walk to come take a look at his injured redshirt junior. And they had an injury at the tight end position. 
in the first game of the season. Joshua Simon, really good tight end, had an ACL injury. He, he was going to have a huge season, but they've been full steam ahead even without him. Yeah, and you think about this, I mean, especially for Daywood Davis, walking out on his own power, not holding his helmet, though. Two catches, 45 yards, two touchdowns. That's a very efficient day. Yes, efficiency <laughs> at its finest. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you hope he's okay. Walking off looks okay. Just a little bit of time to take a breather. Maybe got the wind knocked out of him because it looked like he was the one coming around to kind of, you know, we call it like basketball, like, you know, block guys out from, from letting them get to Zappy before he crossed the, uh, the goal line. Narvison on for the extra point, has a field goal in this game as well, 35-yarder. Western Kentucky looks like a complete team. They've got one of the best offenses in the country. Special teams is really good, and the defense is really starting to pick it up as well. And it's all hilltoppers here in the third quarter as Bailey Zappi Runs it into the end zone. Give him a little shake and bake. Get to the end zone. Toppers on top, 45 to 14 over the Blue Raiders. 45-14, Western Kentucky leads. Well, they love basketball here in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. We've got basketball coming up on stadium. Tipping off November the 9th with a great non-conference matchup. Colorado State might win the Mountain West this season. Oral Roberts just went to the Sweet 16. They've got the Summit League Player of the Year, Max Acemus. It's Tuesday, next Tuesday, 9.30 Eastern Time, right here on Stadium. Welcome to the game. ORU and CSU. Can't wait for college basketball. Yes, it's... Uh, I don't want to rush football. Always sneaks up on you right yeah. there in the middle of football season. Yeah, I know. Uh, Champions Classic is also coming up. That one into the end zone for a touchback. Another big day for Bailey Zappi. Four touchdown passes, 250 yards through the air. And Bailey Zappi has delivered the ball all around this field. Very efficient, working in the freshman, but of course, you know, the oldie but goodies, um, you know, Jareth Stern with another 100-yard performance, Daywood Davis, two tutties on the day, and then, of course, why not cap it off with a rushing touchdown? He's like, everybody else, I've been a good distributor. I deserve a touchdown, too. And he runs that one in. You look at the numbers there, 22 of 39, 250 yards, but four TDs and zero interceptions to keep a firm hold on the touchdown lead uh, in all of FBS. 40 total now for the season. And it's been a high five kind of day for Western Kentucky. Five touchdowns for Zappi. Five forced turnovers by this defense. And Broderick Martin there making, making the big play. And we, we're just, you know, one of the things, you're trying to create opportunities for them to learn. Obviously, you deal with injuries as they come. But once you get to the third and fourth quarterback, it, it's tough to really muster. And I'm not trying to make an excuse for middle because Western Kentucky is a great football team. You have to be at full steam to go against them, but it has been opportunities to trial by fire for... <laughs> and as I say that, <laughs> I was getting ready to get into this great solution about oh, Delello coming in, trying to get his opportunity, and then another pick. So that's two drives for middle uh, to start this half, two turnovers, one forced fumble, now an interception. This was Demetrius Man. Kane, and great effort, just diving right in front of the attended receiver, Jaron Pierce. That's five interceptions and six turnovers now for Middle Tennessee. And second uh, interception for Kane on the season uh, for him, just sitting right there in the nickel slot position, and just, once again, playing in zone and just sitting in his area and then making a decision at the last second. And now Bailey Zappi back out there with a the short field once again. Wide of the mark intended for Jarvis Stearns once again. But like coming into this game, Middle Tennessee was plus 14 in turnover margin. Western Kentucky was minus three. 
they might be even by the time this game ends. Middle is now plus eight. Western Kentucky is now plus three. And we're not even halfway through the third quarter. <laughs> and there's a second possession in the same area for Western Kentucky. Um, two consecutive drives being in the high red zone and working off of turnovers. Average starting position for Western Kentucky still right at midfield. It's Noah Whittington, the running back. They haven't needed a running game today. Only 15 carries for 60 yards. They really haven't needed much of an offense because their defense has forced those six turnovers. And the defense has put them in a position. I mean, they were pressed. The defense probably could come up with 14 points by themselves. <laughs> they already have seven and six turnovers. And middles just just been a tough sliding day for them. And after the great start too, the opening drive touchdown. Zappi going for touchdown number five through the air, but that one incomplete coverage from Teldrick Ross. It was intended for Josh Stearns, younger brother of Jareth. And fourth down. Looks like they bring out the field goal unit once again. Yeah, Braden Narvison is 14 for 14 inside 41, but this one coming from 43 yards out. He's only missed two field goals this season. And this one is perfect. It's now 48 to 14 Western Kentucky should read it should read 2006 because I was still in college you know too but you know th this was something that was a great opportunity my mom she wanted to be at Campbell's she said, oh my gosh I would love to do that one day because she saw Donovan's uh -huh. mom Strahan's mom and all the other moms doing it man wouldn't that be great one day well you know unfortunate situation with Ben having the motorcycle accident after we won Super Bowl 40 um, presented an opportunity like hey whose mom can do it so I immediately raised my hand my mom can do it my mom That's can do awesome. it no like whose mom is local mine's local my mom's in Florida we're in Pittsburgh <laughs> at this time and, and the shoot is the next day I call my mom like mom get on the plane right now I'm flying you up here so you could do this and she did and you know what a tremendous opportunity you know to do that with my mom it, it was it was a cool moment uh, for me as a son to, to give that to my mom something that she's always wanted check it off the bucket list where does that rank? I mean, you got two Super Bowl rings. Did that bring you even more satisfaction? Yeah, you know what? It, it did. Because, as you know, as a son, you know, in a single mom household, like getting, getting to do something like that for mm -hmm. her that, that gives her that attention was a cool moment, um, you know, as far as with the mother-son relationship. Yeah, you know, I don't put it past, you know, marrying my wife and, <laughs> you know, and having two beautiful baby girls. But... You know, that was that was right there in, in, in the top five of accomplishments in life. It's right up there. Pretty neat. Nick Vadiato back in a quarterback for Middle Tennessee. And the handoff goes to Frank Peason. Short of the first down. It'll be third and three for Middle Tennessee. Now let's see if they can get something going here, get a little rhythm, get a first down, and start to claw their way into this game and just get a rhythm. I mean, you know, this game is pretty much out of reach, but at least get something to go for the rest of the season. You know, you're still going for bowl eligibility and getting to a nice bowl game. So you want to build on this because you know you don't have Cunningham in for the rest of the season. So you need to get Vadiato and Delello opportunities to feel comfortable so they can lead this team for the next three games. Yeah, they'll have to win two out of their last three to get there. And uh, there is an injured Hilltopper player who took that hit head on. And that looks to be, you know, I can't tell the number if it's 23, if it's Will Ignat um, that met Pizant in the hole, but he went down immediately at that moment. Seeing the play. No, that's number 24. I'm sorry, that's uh, Malik Staples and the redshirt senior uh, Louisville transfer. All right, we're going to take a, a quick timeout as they attend to Malik Staples.
Well, it's good to see Malik Staples is at least in a seated position now and uh, talking with the training staff and uh, great sign here. He's going to get up. Tremendous sign there um, because when you see the action and the ensuing result uh, made contact with Pizant and then went down immediately and was stiff. And it's good to know that, you know, those things were probably, you know, it was a concussive effect immediately. And then being back to walk to the sidelines, that's, that, that's a good sign because we saw the, the ambulance was on standby and ready to come out on the field if necessary. And it's always scary, you know, as a guy who's had a neck injury myself, you know, that I, you, you just, all, everything goes through your mind at that moment, what it could be if there's a herniated disc, if there's potential of something even worse. You know, I watched as Ryan Shazier and other guys in the NFL level have had similar type of, types of hits and it's not gone that way. So back to action and uh, on first down, the pass is complete to Jaron Pierce. You have some rhythm here for this Middle Tennessee State team, getting a first down and then getting the ball moving. You know, it's always one of the biggest things. You're trying to create some momentum for your team, something to look forward to, and none better than getting the ball moving, getting the ball moving for them. Because like we said, we're not setting up for this game. I mean, this game, I don't think there's a comeback um, available, but you're setting yourself up for the next three games. Finish out the season strong, winning record above 500, and try and get to a bowl game. Next game is uh, Saturday against FIU. That one at home in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Then home again against Old Dominion. And then they'll finish up the season on stadium at FAU. It's the 71st meeting between Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky. And looks like it's going to be a sixth win in the last seven games for the Hilltoppers. And that would even up the series at 35, 35, and one. <laughs> Emphatic way to get that. And these teams have seen each other dating back to the early 1900s, um, you know, as FCS programs and traveling from the Ohio Valley Conference to the Sun Belt, now to the Conference USA. And like we mentioned earlier during halftime, what does that mean another conference or do they continue that rivalry here in Conference USA but they've been lockstep with each other uh, being so close geographically. Yeah we know the Mac wants Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee but uh, that is all still up in the air. We talked to both coaches about that this week. Rick Stock still was saying that uh, they're, they're hoping to know in the next week or so and you know the coaches want to know sooner rather than later. They said it's it's not really messing with recruiting as of yet, but with that early signing date coming, they'd like to know by Thanksgiving or so. And this pass is picked off again. It's the sixth interception of the game for Western Kentucky. Davion Williams getting in on the fun. And it's the most interceptions in a game for Western Kentucky since they joined the FBS. And, you know, trying to make something happen, right? You talk, We talked about just getting some rhythm, and you're trying to hit your receiver. You're trying to hit Jalen Lane. Ball gets overthrown. Davion Williams is there. And when I say that you could call the Hilltoppers ball hawks, uh, that would be an understatement. Six INTs in the game. That's the most I've seen <laughs> since I've called games. And seven turnovers on the day. Uh, Record-setting day for this defense um, that came in and wasn't really talked about. It was the offense, yeah. but the defense has been the highlight of this game. Talking with Maurice Crum, the defensive coordinator, and head coach Tyson Helton, and they were saying, you know, coming out of that UTSA game where they gave up 52 points at home and lost, they've they've done some different things. They've moved some guys around, and they've changed a few things, and there's been a dramatic improvement. And we're seeing it today. Everything coming together for this Western Kentucky team, a real contender now 
in Conference USA. They're going to get to four and one in conference play, and they're going to control their fate in the division with three games to go at Rice against FAU and then at Marshall those FAU and Marshall games are the ones that are going to decide the conference championship yeah because that's who coming into the day they had a three way tie with yep. so when you go head to head it's an opportunity to take the lead and today that they'll bump up and we'll see how Marshall and 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 uh, and FAU yeah, and they're playing each other tonight oh that's right they are so playing. winner of that game will be tied with Western with three weeks to go Western's at Rice next week a game that you would expect them to win, but boy, nobody expected Rice to go into UAB and beat the Blazers a couple of weeks ago. But it is all out there for Western Kentucky after a really tough non-conference. That FAU game, November the 20th, on stadium. And those last two games, it's perfect. Great job by Conference USA scheduling department because <laughs> yeah. you're going to have those those teams meeting up the last two weeks of the season to decide this East division. Yeah, book ending Thanksgiving with some excitement on both ends. And of course, Western Kentucky, no stranger to conference championships. They won here back to back years in 15 and 16. And uh, had a couple of lean years, but Tyson Helton came in couple of years ago was the conference coach of the year in 2019 last year just a weird year it's COVID year as they get back on that one Bailey Zappi made sure Middle Tennessee wasn't going to get their 26th takeaway of the season keeping a clean sheet for Western Kentucky <laughs> and there's the Offensive coordinator Zach Kitley, six foot seven. Didn't play football. He was a basketball player at Abilene Christian. His dad, a legendary track coach at Texas Tech. Just volunteered his time at Texas Tech to Cliff Kingsbury. Sonny Cumbie helped him out, a family friend, and volunteered for a couple years, then got his first shot as an offensive assistant, and man. He is just off and running at Houston Baptist and now here at Western Kentucky. Yeah, you know, Gerald Stearns, uh, a guy that's just racking up the receptions to keep a stranglehold on, on that lead now. That's his 12th reception of the game. And, you know, Western Kentucky try, trying to milk this clock as much as they can, trying to take it down to the last second and then you know, make a play call. And even though I mean, they don't have a great run game, when you look at the stats, Western Kentucky only averages 101 rushing yards a game, but coaches look at plays like that as an extension of the run game. Yes, a pseudo run game, when you throw the now screens, uh, you throw the quick outs, and you create these short passing games to make up for the run game and keep guys in bounds as well. It's Josh Stearns who last year at Houston Baptist as a true freshman led FCS averaging 31 yards a catch. And, and if that Stern's name rings a bell, their older brother, Caden, happens to be a safety for the Denver Broncos. Man. <laughs> so it runs in the family, huh? Out of Waxahachie, Texas? Yeah, uh, Caden went to uh, some school in uh, Austin. Don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Tejas, University <laughs> of Tejas. But uh, no, as a kid, I mean, University of Texas, actually looking at it, they're the ones that kind of started this whole conference changes uh, with teams kind of oh, man. reeling. Yeah. Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC, put everything in motion. Western Kentucky a quarter away from winning again. Yeah, a little Iron Maiden and yeah, a little Stratego. There it is, get the people going. Bailey Zapp with a little double six shooter action there. And Bailey Zappi and the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers with a third and three to start this fourth quarter. And a big lead. That one batted down at the line of scrimmage. Geronte Davis. His defense hasn't given up on trying to play hard and trying to 
make a play. I mean, that's the second time they've been close to a turnover in those situations and haven't converted it yet. Big play by Davis off the edge to bat the pass down. But Western is keeping the offense on the field. They need the 45 yard line on fourth and three. The middle saying that Western moved up front and there is a flag now. Joe Laring, our referee. False start, 78, offense. Five yard penalty. So, third down. so that's Quantavius Leslie, the freshman who plays left guard. Come on, Leslie. <laughs> And let's look at it again right there. The second one from the bottom of the screen on the line. Yep, what? That's not on Leslie, that's for sure. That is not Leslie. That was an inhale, exhale. Listen, he's a, he's a big boy. I, I, I don't know if I necessarily <laughs> agree with that one. Unless there was something with his right arm that flinched. I mean, but from what we saw, that left side of his body was pretty, pretty still. Middle got away with one, forcing the punt. We got a late substitution on the field there, and there's going to be a, a whistle. I might grant Fire Western Kentucky a timeout. Timeout, WKU. 30 seconds. 30 second timeout for Tyson Hilton, the brother of Clay Hilton, who uh, he just got a new job. You know, the former coach at USC. USC threw him by the wayside earlier this season. Clay's like, all right. I'm going to Georgia Southern, baby. That's was right. just introduced this week. Take my wares down south. <laughs> and Tyson was saying that, you know, that they're from the south, love hunting and fishing. It's going to be a really good fit. Yeah, I think none, none better fit if you want to go hunting and fishing outside of uh, going to North Carolina. I think App State would probably be the number one poster child for that. But Georgia Southern, definitely a good fit. Clay back in the head coaching realm again with that vacancy still out there at USC interesting who they're going to put a lot of names in the hat but uh haven't haven't heard any formalized discussions yet about interviews so on the second punt it's a low line driver and it's going to be returnable good spark Jalen Lane still on his feet midfield now cuts it back. Jalen Lane close to the 20. He loses it, but Yusuf Ali heads up play to jump on top of that wow, one. Wow, close. Yeah, he rolled over the top of a player, and the ball came out, and they did rule it a fumble. Lane had a 70-yard touchdown return in the opener against Monmouth. Yeah, good job switching hands as you get to that sideline. And almost had it. He grabbed his grabbed his hand, and yep, he was not on the ground. His back was on top of the defender. So good heads up play by Yusuf Ali to dive on top of it. Best starting position for this offense all day. Coming with 14:39 left in the fourth quarter for MTSU. A handoff up the middle and a tough run in there for Frank Peasant. I tell you what, Peasant, I'm starting to like this young man. He's a freshman. He runs hard. He, I said this earlier in the game. He runs angry. That's another. He's still angry in the fourth quarter. I don't blame him. If I look at the score, I'd be angry too. <laughs> but his running is just punishing. Fake it to him, and the pass complete. That's Isaiah Gathings. And that'll set up a first and goal at the five-yard line. Listen, I know we don't deal in shoulda, coulda, wouldas, but this is what I think the offense wanted to be, right? Solid running, establishing the line of scrimmage, short, quick throws to get Vadiato comfortable and kind of be that two-dimensional team. Now, obviously, those picks killed that really quickly, but this is where I think middle wants to be. They want to be in this position where you have the play-action pass working in your favor. Look at Peace it cutting to the end zone. Rick Stock still said, I love Frank. Great work ethic, 
doesn't say anything, just does everything exactly how you say it. And he's still fighting here. Yeah, and here's the thing. He comes from a school in my home state of Florida, Scambia. Hall of Famer, might have heard of him. By the name of Emmett Smith also went to the same high school. <laughs> so, you know, looking at Pizan and his running style, I'm like, hey, might be something in the water up there in, uh, in Pensacola, Florida, up there in the panhandle. But what a tremendous drive um, opportunity. Great return on the punt that sets up that essentially, what, three play, three play score? Yep, three plays, 16 yards. The punt return by Jalen Lane and the, the heads up recovery on the fumble by Yusuf Ali. Middle Tennessee best starting field position of the day and they pay it off. Still down big though here at Western Kentucky. Oh, the Malone family loving what they see. The Angela Malone, four tackles and uh, one pass breakup. We'll find out if D'Angelo's mother wins our fan of the game vote in just a little bit. Angelina was one of our three options for fan of the game. You can vote on our Twitter site at Stadium. Middle Tennessee just scored on a short field after a long punt return, and it's 48-21. And this is going to be returned. Shakari Moses to the 30-yard line. Here are the choices for the fan of the game. Big Red in that first one, Middle Tennessee fans in the middle, and then uh, that is D'Angelo Malone's mother, Angelina. Who's our winner? Uh, oh, right there. It's, it's, it's mom day here on stadium. We had uh, Max's mom featured, and uh, there's the family. Yeah, she's right there enjoying the game. It's Angelina Malone, your son D'Angelo's having a great game. Western Kentucky wins all around. Not just the players, but the fans too. Parents included. At D'Angelo's second all-time in school history and tackles for a loss behind only Sherrod Coates. And Josh Stearns with another, another catch. Trying to catch up to, uh, to Big Bro on the catching. Like, hey, throw it to me. Jareth has enough. He's keeping the lead. Let, let, let me get some catches in here. Now, Josh has four. Jareth has 11. Bailey Zappi with five total touchdowns in this game. Incomplete. Intended for Dalvin Smith. Close one there. Another third and long here for the Hilltoppers. I want to remind you that we have more football coming up on stadium. Top of the hour, UNLV at New Mexico. Ari Wolf and Max Brown standing by from Albuquerque. On third down and eight. Pressure from Middle Tennessee. Zappy. oh, he just kind of flips it. And that'll be an intentional grounding. That's uh, clearly a pass. Sure, Jordan Branch wants the touchdown, <laughs> but uh, that's not going to count, big fella. He had one last game. Had a scoop and score last time out. One of those three non-offensive touchdowns for Middle Tennessee in their win over Southern Miss last week. Yeah. It was not a lateral. There <laughs> was definitely nobody in the area. Except for Branch. <laughs> Not sure what they're trying to sort out here. I think there's some Middle Tennessee players that are in the Western Kentucky backfield. Intentional grounding, offense, and four. Volume plays in the spot of foul. Loss of down, fourth down. A lot of pressure, a lot of bodies. Six bodies back there. Bailey Zappi does not have a pressure relief valve or anybody around. All, his, all four of his receivers are out and about. So instead of taking the sack, 
He dumped it off, but fortunately nobody was there, so you still lose it at that spot, and you bring out your punter regardless. Not many teaching moments for Bailey Zappi at quarterback. I mean, uh, that's probably one of them. I mean, in a game like this, just eat that thing. Protect yourself. Go down. Yeah, nothing to gain there. Only, only bad things can happen. Just let it happen. Uh, but a flawless game by him, you know, when you look at everything else that he's done up until that point. 281 passing yards, four passing touchdowns, and one rushing touchdown as well. Middle Tennessee has it back with 12.25 to go as the sun sets here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Another win coming for Tyson Helton. Bailey's happy there with his offensive line. Western Kentucky with a 48-21 lead. Zappi 29 for 50. Four passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. Is he our player of the game today? He's one of our choices. The other choice is the entire Western Kentucky defense. And they have forced how many turnovers? That's what, seven? Six interceptions and one fumble. Seven turnovers. And scan that QR code right now to vote for either the Western Kentucky defense or Bailey Zappi. Max is scanning it right now. I am. My I guess am. is you're voting for the defense. Absolutely. Big boys unite. That's what I need to see. Boom. Locked in my score. That's Jalen Lane, the punt returner, who does a nice job on that reverse. It's a first down for Middle Tennessee. Uh, and you're plus seven in the turnover battle. You're going to win every time. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a no-brainer. I mean, Bailey Zappi, is, you know, this is what he does. Scores multiple touchdowns and has, you know, 200-plus yards passing, actually below his average. But the defense, to come away with as many turnovers and in such dramatic fashion for a lot of them, uh, playing over the top, Beanie Bishop, right? Two, two interceptions by himself, one is a pick six. Uh, so this defense has definitely been playing and holding, I mean, Middle Tennessee to 21 points um, so far in this game. I mean, it's been a tremendous effort by a defense that gave up 52 to U, U, um, UTSA um, just a couple weeks ago. So, yeah, defense has come a long way. Maurice Crump, the defensive coordinator, was saying that their Achilles heel had been giving up the big plays and giving it up at the wrong times. And he said, you know, we call 50-50 balls in, in college football. But they, they've really been more like 60-40 to the offenses we've been facing. Not the case today. No, it's definitely been 70-30s defense pro. Hmm. Uh, just a couple of those fingertips. You know, just falling off the fingertips of the receivers, bouncing in the air just a little bit too long. A couple wounded ducks up there in the air. But Western Kentucky was primed and ready. And, you know, you talk about the opportunity, it, and, you know, meets preparation that equals success. And that's what has been a successful day for Western Kentucky's defense. Frank Peason getting a breather. He's now up to 71 yards on the ground, had that touchdown on the last drive. And that one is almost intercepted. Michael Pitts had it. And that's how we've seen several of the interceptions today. They, they've been on the hands of intended receivers and they've deflected to Hilltoppers. Yeah, it's been fingertips and palms that have caused a lot of these. And right there, that's kind of been, you know, kind of a microcosm of the day, just close but not quite hauling in the pass for uh, Middle Tennessee's receiving core. With 10.30 to go, Batiato finds Yusuf Ali, stretches that to bring up a third down and five. manageable zone for Middle Tennessee and here's the thing they're not that bad they've been 6 of 14 just below 500 on third down conversions but you know and they're better than Western Kentucky on third down conversion but it's just been so tough with like you said the interceptions and those big turnovers that have really been the difference in this game and why it's a 27 point game right now because they've done a good job at points moving the ball being consistent for a freshman quarterback and 
that pass complete. Gathings a little bit short of a first down. It'll bring up a fourth down and about three yards. Inbounds, yeah. keep the clock. Boy, Crum was a good player back in the day, wasn't he? Two-time captain at Notre Dame as a linebacker. Yes, he was. Great player and, you know, doing a good job here with his defense. I know he's going to be very happy tonight, a happy Golden Domer hmm. uh, going in, knowing that you're trying to create a new standard here and what Western has on the precipice, potentially with the birth to the Conference USA Championship game. Well, if they win out, they'll be there. On fourth down, that pass incomplete. Intended for Jaron Pierce. And it's not technically a turnover, but it is a turnover on downs. Yeah. And that's something I've always I've always argued. Why does a turnover on downs happen? They you know, go in the turnover range. Because you're getting the ball the very next play. Yeah, Western's offense will have it once again on the other side of this quick timeout. 9.02 to go. Maurice Crum and company heading toward another victory. A beautiful sunset here. Bowling Green, Kentucky, the third largest city in Kentucky, just minutes north of the Tennessee border. Call this rivalry 100 miles of hate. In Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Bowling Green, Kentucky, separated by 100 miles of Interstate 24 and Interstate 65. And Western Kentucky going with Noah Whittington again on the ground. They'll move the sticks, a pickup of 10. And the receivers today, Jarrett Stearns, look, he's putting up his numbers, 11 for 110. Didn't get in the end zone, though. Corley, Tinsley, and Davis, who caught two touchdown passes today. Yeah, efficiency by Davis, but of course, Jarrett Stearns with the volume and logging his seventh 100-yard receiving game on the season out of eight. That's pretty good. Pretty good, actually ninth, I'm sorry, ninth game of the season, seven for nine. Uh, with 100 yards receiving. And some perspective here is as good as Bailey Zappi and Jarris Stearns have looked, they're both well below their season averages. I mean, Zappi's thrown for 281. He averages 426. Jarris Stearns averages about 145 receiving yards a game. He's at 110. Tell you what, though. Creative use of the eye black. I think I, his, Joshua Stearns, his brother, is right in front of him with the helmet on. Both of them have that kind of that hawk WWE type mm -hmm. of uh, look, yeah. almost like they're going half Ultimate Warrior. Not full Ultimate Warrior, <laughs> but half Ultimate Warrior with the eye black. Second down and one. And Whittington cannot get the corner. And Jarrett today held out of the end zone, but certainly not held in check. No, Jarrett Stearns, great job on the swing route. This is kind of what's really spurned this offense going. And you just see, he's just so electric in space, dynamite. The first guy's never going to really be the one that hits him. It's always a second and third type of guy um, that gets on him. Very wiry, 5'9", but 11 catches on the day. And you could say Stern's brother combo, that's what, 15 catches on the day uh, for both of them combined. Uh, just tremendous coming over from Houston Baptist with Coach Kitley and Bailey Zappi and, and Ratzlaff and just making a difference and really transforming this Western Kentucky offense. And Tyson Hilton says it's already reaping rewards on the recruiting path. He says every receiver in the country wants to come here right now because they see what we're doing. Well, and think about this, Bailey Zappi, it's not like Bailey Zappi's a senior that transferred over here. He technically still has eligibility after this year. So yeah, you want, you want to come and try and get inundated in this offense to get your stats up. We asked Bailey Zappi about that as you take a look at some more eye black. From oh, Mason, Mason Brooks. Brooks. Yeah, he's the one when the helmet's off. I mean, I felt like he was going for the full dye, like he just missed his beard, like he ran out <laughs> of, uh, of the blackout uh, right as he got to, to the chin region. But that was impressive. I don't even know what the use is up there, Chris. What's the, what's the usage when it gets like above Second the sideburns? I, I don't want it too close to my eyes, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I know it's called eye black, but uh, I don't think yeah. it's good for your eyes. Isn't this supposed to be just a little finger dab below the eyelids to take the sun reflection out? Well, the sun is set tonight, and the sun setting on this ball game. 6.18 to go, a fourth down coming up. Like if you're a store that sells eye black in Bowling Green, Kentucky, you get this guy 
what, what's going on? He's here? using a tube a day. That, 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 that's the question mark. That's, that's the Mason question Brooks, mark. by the way, the offensive tackle. I mean, listen, I love offensive linemen. I, I'm glad he's using eye black. You know, I usually see defensive linemen using, it. but it goes it goes across the nose too, almost like a nasal strip. That's yeah, where right. that's where I'm confused. I could get it under the eyes, right? He has it under the eyes, but then it's like he started getting into doodle <laughs> mode. I was like, oh, you know what? I really want mutton chops. Let me draw mutton chops on here. You into the what? beard and then up into the, I mean, onto the forehead. Why not just complete it and just black yeah. out your entire forehead? I mean, at that point, yeah, just le just leave the mustache, right? You yeah. know, the blonde mustache for, uh, for emphasis. Hey, but you know what? You, you're one of the, the best offensive linemen in Conference USA. You can do that. Yeah, you know, I mean, if it's me, you know, just take it up here, right? Then just go right around there. Just get that trouble area. I mean, there's so much, so many opportunities here. If you're going to get creative, and go a little bit like Crayola crazy <laughs> with the uh, with the eye black, that, that would be a guy. Time. I'd be like, you know what, Mason Brooks, stay away from the eye black. None of our receivers have eye black. <laughs> you yeah, I hope they have more face. than one tube back there in the uh, locker room because yeah, he uses, Mason Brooks needs all of it. That's two sticks. Of, that's two sticks alone that he's used on his face. Oh, nice move. That's Frank Pizant. I just wanted to finish up a thought on uh, we we're talking about Bailey Zappi and does have more eligibility left. But uh, we were talking with Tyson Helton about that this week. And Tyson said, look, he's got to go after this season. I mean, I'd love to have him back, sure, but he's got to go. And they really do think that that he could be a big get for uh, a team in the NFL draft this season. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see where he goes if he's a day two guy day three guy. But uh, they certainly appreciate everything he's done for them this season at Western Kentucky. But uh, that's selfless from the coach. You, 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 you want to keep him, but you also know what's best for him. And right now, strike while it's hot. Bailey Zappi in a year really where there aren't a ton of great quarterbacks that are going to be drafted. Well, well, well and, and, and you think and you think of it. Bailey Zappi, clean cut, no eye black, not necessary. But, you know, think about who the preseason favorites were for the Heisman, right? We're looking at Spencer Rattler, usurped Benched. by Caleb Williams. Sam Howell, tough year, even though they had a good victory today. Yeah, beat Wake today. Yeah. Bryce Young, too young to be draft eligible. Matt Corral is probably the only other one that's going to be a top guy. Will Levis, I mean, not Will Levis, but um, the kid from Liberty. As oh, well. yeah, Malik Willis. Malik Willis. So, I mean, you think Bailey Zappi goes out, has a great pro day, possibly gets an invitation. He's a junior, could go to the Collegiate Bowl for the NFLPA, show, you know, showcase it at a, at a bigger level. Um, yeah, he could be a guy that could that, that could be a contributor and get into day two uh, easily. Yeah, Tyson Helton was saying, you know, sometimes you look at these guys that put up these numbers and they say it's the system. But Tyson was saying that you know, it's it's an air raid offense with pro principles, and he has all the options at his disposal when he is back there in the shotgun waiting for the snap. He has the pass protections. He has the checks. He has full command, and they think he's operating at an NFL level this season. Well, and we've seen the success of those guys um, that are now air raid quarterbacks. But look at these numbers. I mean, you don't throw 13,000 yards by accident. <laughs> You know, or system, 115 touchdowns. And look at Jared Stearns, another guy who's going to be the emergence of the slot in the NFL. You think of, you know, not only what Rondell Moore most recently from from Purdue came in and added to Arizona, but I mean the Wes Welkers of the world. We can go on and on. Danny Amendola's, you know, um, oh goodness, I just I just forgot uh, Julian Edelman, um, like Cole Beasley, Hunter Renfro. The slot is so important in the league today because it's getting more of your spread offenses that are getting involved and having a big difference because we don't see two tight end, you know, tight end and two running backs in the backfield and what we call, you know, basic personnel um, as base, I formation. We're getting more three and four wide receiver sets that are the base principles. Look at what Patrick Mahomes is doing, an air raid quarterback. Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, a little bit lesser because he's injured right now. But these quarterbacks are now flourishing in the league and some of the top young talent in this league. A couple of those guys you mentioned. Uh, Zach Kitley, very familiar with, the offensive coordinator at uh, Western Kentucky. 
was uh, one of the protégés for Patrick Mahomes at Texas Tech. And uh, he is doing a great job as the offensive coordinator at Western Kentucky with all these options at his disposal. It's going to be a fourth straight blowout victory. And uh, they're going to be in a tie for first place with three weeks to go and feeling really good about themselves. Tyson Helton told us that uh, right now they feel like their best football is ahead of them and they have a playoff mentality right now. Yeah, great we catch by Jermichael Thompson to come in and the field Simpkins judge is trying to tell him no, you did not take that away. And Simpkins is trying to say that's another pick for us. Yeah. They've already set their record as an FBS school with six interceptions in this game. Became an FBS program about 15 years ago. But they're plus seven in the turnover battle. I think that's the bigger key. It's not just that they force seven. They haven't turned it over against the team that was leading the nation in takeaways, Middle Tennessee, coming into this game. And they've held them, you know, to goose eggs in this game. Five turnovers a week ago, zero today. And there's been opportunities, even those slim ones. There's been about two opportunities where they had an opportunity to get that turnover. Now the fumble recovery, Bailey Zappi jumps on top of it. And then just a near miss on a miss throw by Bailey Zappi as well. Throwing to the inside shoulder, just couldn't hold on to it. Um, MTU's, MTSU defender. DJ England Chisholm with a nice move. It'll be first and goal, Middle Tennessee. He had that 45-yard touchdown catch on the opening drive of the game. Such a brilliant start to this game for Nick Vadiato. If you're just joining us, Chase Cunningham. The starter for Middle Tennessee for most of the season injured last week and we're told by the school he's out for the season. So it appears to be Nick Vadiato uh, the rest of the way with uh, a little bit of Mike DeLello as, as well who's more of a running threat than a passing threat. Final 80 seconds of this game. Martel Petaway getting denied uh, in the lane. Clock still running. DJ England Chisholm has been one of the bright spots. I mean, at 5'7, in fact, you can find him. He, he's been, he's definitely reeled off some catches, probably leading uh, or second on the team in catches today behind Yusuf Ali. That pass tipped and incomplete. It'll be third down and goal. Don't forget, coming up right when we're done in just a minute or so, we're going to take you out to New Mexico for some Mountain West football. UNLV taking on New Mexico, the Lobos, Ari Wolf and Max Brown standing by. For Rick Stockstill, it's going to be all about finishing the season. They'll need two wins in their final three games to get to that six win mark in bowl eligibility. The pass incomplete. And now it's fourth down. Yeah, Mariano tried to rifle it in there and create a hole for Yusuf Ali. You now tight coverage. You know, it's always tougher when you get into the red zone. Those windows get smaller and smaller that you get to throw in because you got that 12th defender, that back line of the end zone that tends to, that tends to constrict everything. Western Kentucky looking for one more stop, and then they can put an end to this one. Batiato backpedaling now, zings it incomplete, intended for Yusuf Ali. And Maurice Croma saying, get off the field. Yep. Get off the field, let's get the offense on, let's go victory formation, and let's celebrate. And the greatest formation in football, six tight diamond. How about the defense this afternoon and evening? A huge hit early. It kind of rattled Vadiato a little bit through the pick. And that was one of seven turnovers in this game. Beanie Bishop with the pick six there. They just never let up. No, they, they, once they put the gas on the pedal, they just kept going. And they hit it to 100 real quickly. You see, look at that. <laughs> just push the guy out of the way as he's trying to hold the ball. And then Vadiato trying to make something happen, right? Just take a big play to the end zone, and it just does not happen. Now they are player of the game. They being the entire defensive unit. Second most interceptions in Conference USA history. Six picks for this Western Kentucky defense. Maurice Crum 
Got to be so proud. They won our fan vote for player of the game over Bailey Zappi. You asked him about that on the call as we wind down the final seconds here. I said, hey, they, look, all the credit going to that offense, all those fancy numbers. But as a defense, boy, that, that, that's, that's got to really empower you and give you some fuel to say, hey, look at us. We're pretty good, too. Well, and it also, it, when, when your team is so explosive, as, as explosive as this offense, it gives you a little bit more of, of kind of aggression, right? You can go out, you can be more aggressive on, de on defenses because you know that you have a cushion of a lead, so you can blitz more, you can man press more, and really create some havoc for the opposing offenses. Hilltoppers get to five and four overall, four and one in conference play. Tyson Helton with his fourth consecutive victory.